Grapple fans, and welcome to this, spe- well, not even special edition of The Lost Art of Wrestling. It's a normal episode. A normal one. A normal one. But we're, well, we've got a lot to cover. <laughs> yeah. Because um, real, real life and lack of time getting in the way. Pretty much. Yeah. Standard, standard for us, though. Absolutely. We'll be reviewing Maine. You come winter, come winter next year. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get round. We'll get round to. Uh, we'll cover our. Um, we'll cover WrestleMania next year, and then while we're at it, we'll give our Rumble predictions. <laughs> the first few is four year, four year behind. <laughs> Absolutely. When, when thirty six falls around, we'll review thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're we're in timing with the network, aren't we? Four weeks behind with the actual show. <laughs> Oh, standard bit, standard. Absolutely. I'm surprised no one cashed in on that earlier, to be fair. <laughs> so I'll do a, I'll do a four-week delay of Raw. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? We could be four weeks behind the product. <laughs> Get it all for free. Well, nine ninety nine. Yeah, but it's like... They're advertising the Rumble still. All like, you can get the Rumble on Sky Box Office. And then everyone comments, or oh, just get the network for a tenner and save, <laughs> save yourself 10 quid. Like, get it, watch it, and cancel it. Yeah. Like, and then you've, you've, got it, you've got it for a month anyway. For free. If you don't watch anything else. Oh, is it free? It's free for your first month still, isn't it? Oh, it might be for new subscribers, yeah. yeah. They just get a new email. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> Bunkle. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yes, I am, of course, your host, Coxie, joined once again by the... Ba- oh, no, he's not here. I'm, Never know, mind. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not signed, sealed and delivered. I've been, I've been <laughs> and, of course, the other voice you can hear, he is a man. Who is? Half a man. <laughs> oh, you delayed it this time. Hey. <laughs> it's Paul the Guy Flinders. Yeah, it's me, it's me, it's TG. TFG. The guy, TFG. <laughs> According to uh, Flaming Grill, whatever it's called, I am the fucking fat guy. But yeah, you can, be, you can be TFG, the Flaming Grill. The Flaming Grill. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me money. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Flaming Grill. <laughs> it's their new, their new spokesperson. Absolutely. <laughs> Just stood at the Smith down, giving out leaflets. <laughs> I am the flaming grill. <laughs> Feed me chicken. Oh. Yes, it's like that guy who sits there for like Wednesday or something, just doing a challenge. Absolutely. And you sit, you sit there waiting until someone comes in and goes, I'll have a challenge. And you got to say, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm stood there with a referee shirt and a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Giving them hints and pointers. <laughs> yeah. It's there with stopwatch. <laughs> You will go. You will go on my first whistle. <laughs> <laughs> make make him do laps of the pub first to get so he gets, he gets a head start. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you you got to go up to the back, up the ramp, come back down the little stairs, come back round into the toilets, out the toilets, back round outside, follow it round, come back in the fire exit, and uh, just repeat the course twice, and then come back here to the bar and. Uh, <laughs> Winner gets to go first. Yeah, just don't do it. Don't make Christian do the course. He'll fall through the toilet door. So, oh, not again. Uh, exactly, not again. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, oh, yeah, yeah. We've, we've got like I say, we've got a lot to get through. We do. So uh, we're going to jump right into things. Um, a Hall of Fame. Oh yes. It's uh, it's coming around quick. They've, yeah. not they've not announced anyone yet, but there's there's rumours going around of who they might be inducted this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know one of them they said is Bam Bam Bigelow, possibly. That's almost a shoe because like, well, that was that was that was discussed last year, wasn't it? So yeah, and there's been enough um, room. Unless be honest, they're running out of names from that period. So true. Um, and there's there's a lot of this thing. Um, petition that's been going on for like it seems like years now the uh petition to get the british bulldog in it seems to be picking up steam again um, like it does every year yeah but it seems to be getting like actual backing from like current superstars current superstars and like even like news outlets are picking up on it 
Like, yeah, yeah, why is he not inducted? Yeah, only five years too late. <laughs> well, it's yeah. a sort of they're sort of saying like they might have a um because of like the success of NXT UK and things like that, they might sway that way and put a British star in. Well, it makes sense. So. Well, if not that, if you're going to think about that, there's a possibility and it could be William Regal who also deserves it. Yeah. You know, just for the fact that he re- he uh, tweeted us back. So <laughs> he deserves it for that reason. <laughs> but, um, yeah, there's William Regal. You've got Fit Finlay. Yeah. Um, there's a few others as well. Well, you've got the likes of the guys, like, if you're going back to World of Sport, you've got, like... You got Rollerball Rocco, you've got Big Daddy. Do they own this... the well, let's say do they own the footage for that though? They probably don't, but I'm guessing they could easily acquire it. If yeah, they wanted I suppose. To. Yeah. Um But it it depends how far they'd want to go to it into it in like a British in a British aspect or whatever. Like would they do a, a separate British wing or they're gonna do a well, it wouldn't make sense, that, because if you think about it, then you've got to do, like, a Samoan wing, and then you'd have to do a Canadian wing, and then you'd do an American wing, and then you'd mm. do, like, a Mexican wing, and be like, well, it's, it's too much shit. Just have a wrestling wing and a celebrity wing. That's enough for me. Yeah, I think that, that should be enough. And it, it, if you should be able to go, right, well, who's the British guy we could put in this year? And you're going to be putting fucking nobody. Next thing you know, fucking, what's his name? Wade Barrett's going to be a Hall of Fame because we've run out of British talent that have actually <laughs> So it it doesn't make sense. So for me, keep it as a wrestling wing, just a wrestling wing, where mm. when women, no matter what background you are, if you're good enough to be in the WWE like Hall of Fame, you go into the main wing, and that way you're going to have people that are genuinely deserve it go in rather than go right. We've got to think of some Mexican guy to go in this year. Uh, who can we put in? Who Nico, you can go in this year. <laughs> yeah, true. But it's this thing of like with them having a um, wanting to build like a physical hall of fame and things as well. Yeah, it's but been, no t- been talked about for years and. Yeah, but there's no reason why if you were going to do a physical hall of fame, you could do it by era rather than by who was a great from which country. And then that just starks up the argument. Well, hang on a minute. How come we've only got like so many black people that are in the hall of fame, but yet there's all these white people in there? From different countries, like, well, no, it's just that you're based strictly on how influential you were to the wrestling business and how mm. good and how beloved you were, not with the color of your skin or your nationality. So, I would do it by era. If it was going to do separate wings, it's era like 70s, 80s, attitude, new generation, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that's the way, I, that's the way to do it. Mm. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, Hall of Fame rumours. Um, I'll be honest with you, I've been out of the loop, so I'm relying on you a bit here. <laughs> well, there's uh, a rumour going around. I'm guessing it was Dave Meltzer said it, which is probably going to be a load of shit from all the uh, the smarks and all that sort of thing. I'm a smart no. myself, so it's... Um... Well, it won't be the first time he's right, so... <laughs> All those people that give you shit for being a, uh, air quotation, smart, uh, go fuck you, because nine times out of ten, he's correct. Well, there's them in the likes of uh, Vince Russo as well, who I was listening to a pod last night with Austin and Russo going over old Brian Pillman promos, and it was like the whole, uh, the old Smart Mark promo he did in ECW, and he's like, he's still working you. You did exactly what he wanted you to do. Mm. <laughs> um, that's enough one I'm surprised in the, in the Hall of Fame yet Brian Pillman it's time can't blow your load all in one goal otherwise you've got one amazing year of Hall of Fame and then fuck all probably the reason why Bulldog hasn't been in there yet Poss- possibly you know possibly um, yeah it's uh there's rumours going around that, uh, of course, Taker's going in this year. Which would make sense. It I mean, would. How, old, how old is he now? 53, I want to say. 
there's not many people still wrestling on even back in the day that was still in the 50s. I mean, you did have people going on in that day, but it, let's be honest, the action isn't as physical there, then as it is now. It's more... I'd say the action's more physical now because it was more holds and things like now it's all they're bouncing around the rings like fucking ping pong balls. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a it's a younger person's game now, which is why you see people like uh, Pete Dunne, like tra- uh, uh, Tyler Bay, young champions. People being champions younger and younger and younger now because they realise they're going to be burning themselves out. Mm. Yeah, it's um, it's another thing. It was part of the uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, what Russo and Austin were on about, saying basically saying all this flippy dippy shit, it's like it takes away the psychology and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's all about right, uh, what crazy shit they're gonna do. Yeah, it's like it's like these people are pulling Canadian destroyers out in the middle of matches. It's like, oh, what are you gonna do to top that? <laughs> hate it, hate it, hate it. It's you do all this crazy shit, and then all of a sudden you finish it on like a fucking little rest, like a fucking tap, like a I don't know, or some sort of hold, and tap them out. But you're doing all this crazy flippy shit that back in about twenty years ago would have been a fucking finishing move. I mean, let's not forget a DDT is a regular move nowadays, but it was a finishing move twenty odd years ago. Yeah. But that's where the simplicity is lost. Yeah, absolutely. That, look at look at Will Ospreay's current finish, the uh, Stormbreaker. And uh, it's like he double underhooks him and gets him onto his shoulder. And then he's got to reposition him and he spins out or whatever and he turns it into like a neckbreaker. It's like, it's, just... It sounds like an old school creative finishing move where you do about 12 different steps yeah, for no apparent it, reason. It pretty much is. Um, and it's even on 2K19 now, the new move set. See, I haven't got 2K19 yet. I don't so. know whether I'm going to be because of plans. But um, yeah. we shall see. Um, but yeah, I just think it's too flip do bro. It's pointless. Yeah. I just hate yeah. pointless flip de doos Same here. But yeah, back to the Hall of Fame. Yeah, Undertaker's yeah. room so... to go in. Take his room to go in, and people, a few people said to me, like, no, 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 not this year, not this year. And it's like, but looking at it logically, he's rare, very, very rarely done live appearances, and he's very rarely done any sort of signings or anything like that. Whereas this year now, it's like he's appearing at... X, Y, and Z comic cons. He's appearing at X, Y, and Z wrestling cons. He's inside, doing an inside, inside, he's the, doing ropes. inside the ropes tour. Um, he's doing interviews. He's doing this, that, and the other. He's been spotted out and about places. So it's like... Because t- I know Taker as well, I mean, he sort of he stuck to the gimmick, which is why he'd never appeared at the Hall of Fame as in the actual ceremony in the crowd, because he's always sort of... He's wanting to keep the mystique of the character. Mm-hmm. In a sense, but it's sort of in a way you can, but in a way you can't be taken. It's a weird character to keep the gimmick on, really, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, when but he goes to the uh, Hall of Fame, that's him retiring. I'm pretty much guessing so, and it's like Mania 35 is like a landmark Mania. Like, he's 20, was it 24 and 2 or something? Yeah. So. Like if he does if he does one more this year, like if he did like another squash match or something this year, or if he does whatever, and then he goes out on like twenty five and two, um, I think that'd be the way to go. But then like the saying, there's no match announced for him yet and stuff. But I think it's going to be one of these if it's they're either going to announce it at the Rumble or they're going to announce it on Raw the night after. Mm-hmm. And that that's when it's gonna there's gonna be like a little mini feud starting of like about him going in the Hall of Fame or being a Hall of Fame or whatever. And they'll probably bring in this finger of like, Oh, you're gonna bow out bow out now or something, like when you've not faced me or whatever, whoever it's gonna be. I don't know yet. Well, I personally so, think he's gonna go in the Hall of Fame. Who's one of the people that's closely associated with the Undertaker that's not in the Hall of Fame? It's gonna be Kane. Exactly. So I'm gonna think Kane is gonna come back for this mm. little for this feud, 
And he's going to say, why are you in the Hall of Fame? I made you who you are. Obviously, it's bullshit. But if you turn it in, if you make it having a heel cane, it would make sense. And it'd also be poetic for them to actually bow out at the same time. Yeah, I can see that happening. It mm. makes sense. But then it's what they do a triple induction where they do obviously Undertaker would be like the the main the main uh, top of the class or whatever, so to speak. Mm. What induct like the then brothers you, of destruction? Well they'd have to like induct Taker as the main one, then induct Kane, but then also induct the brothers as a tag team. Mm. But then that would take a hell of a lot of time up because for me that what would make sense there is you do three separate inductions because obviously Undertaker's definitely had a Hall of Fame worthy career. Mm. So is Kane. And then you'd obviously put the tag team in together as Brothers of Destruction. But saying that, the Brothers of Destruction as an actual functional tag team wasn't around for that long. True, but they did appear at Crown Jewel together. Mm. So, yeah, there's a poss- Yeah, I suppose you could put, you could put them in as a Hall of Fame as well. So you got three separate inductions there. Mm. But if obviously, um, I think you'd have to put Undertaker in first. Yeah. And then Kane. Um, but I do think obviously you could put Kane in as, like I say, if you're going to have a sort of have a match shoehorned in, it could be in relation to the uh, Hall of Fame announcement. And it could be a sort of jealousy sort of thing. So why am I not in the Hall of Fame when I'm, you know, just as responsible for his career? Sort of thing. So, you know what I mean? It's it's either that or they probably they might play it off in a way where if it is Kane, it's going to be a case of like... Um, it's because like the one thing Kane hasn't done at Mania is beat Taker. And they've taken it to Ron twice, I want to say. Yeah, it's, I think it's twice he's took him on at Taker like, at Mania. Four, 14 and 20 or something like that. And mm. So. But failing that, it'd be the one inducting him. And, oh, de- definitely, yeah. But the thing is about that is if he does induct him, the Hall of Fame really isn't a place where they carry on start storylines and things like that. So I don't see it carrying on from there. Mm. So. If he does end up inducting him and gets you know, I can't see it. I can't see it being him that obviously has the match with. Two could two I could see inducting the Undertaker. At this G- point, I'd, I'd, I was going to say I'd say Michaels. Either Michaels or Jim Ross. Yeah. Jim Ross would be a good shout. Um, can't think of anyone else. Trips, um, maybe. Sorry. Maybe trips, maybe. Yeah, possibly trips because he's from that era. Maybe sh- uh, maybe Stone Cold. Yeah. Maybe Steve Austin. Someone from the Attitude Era, anyway, definitely. Or it could even be uh, outside chance. It could be fucking Ted DiBiase. Mm. Possibly. As an outside, because he debuted as part of his little stable, didn't he? Yeah. So. But it could always be. Sense. It could be Brother Lover who inducts him. To be fair, because it was Brother Lover who brought him in, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, so Bruce Pritchard. He, he has his little show, doesn't he? His podcast yeah. where he does on the network. Yeah. So. But there um, is that. God, there's loads when you think about it. It depends how they want to do it, how they go about doing it, though, because there's a couple of options they've got for uh, opponents. There's Mick Foley as well. Yeah. Mick Foley, because he had the hell in the cell. And yeah. obviously not um, the numerous matches. I'd, I'd lean towards Michaels, though, because of the, uh, they, they had the first hell in the cell match together, didn't they? They had this career-ending match. Yeah, that they as well. Match. They had the two clinics at WrestleMania, them two mm. years in a row. Yeah, I, I'd I'd say running order. If obviously if it's not Kane, if, you, if you're going to go with that feud, which for me would make sense because you could you retire both guys on a high. Um, 
It would be Shawn Michaels. If it, if, if, if if it's not that, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be Kane. It'll be someone else that comes out to challenge him. Maybe maybe a returning Bray Wyatt again, but I don't want to see that shit. No. I've, I've given up on Bray Wyatt now because the, <laughs> the character's pretty much lost all credibility for me. Yeah. Well, right. since, since we ripped it apart. Yeah. So, there's one of them. Uh, yeah, I don't even know with Wyatt anymore. It's like he came in really good. He had his little feud with Kane, and then they just sort of every match, every pay per view match or main match after that, he pretty much lost. Yeah, just he just got more and more diluted. Yeah. To the so, point, you, to the point where he pretty much ended up being a Looney Tunes um, villain. <laughs> I was in, oh, so I was expecting him soon to start wearing a monocle, the top hat, and a cape. <laughs> With um, the the thingy of goo. Yeah, absolutely. Acid Look, or whatever. I say it's, it's shave apart from a little like really thin mustache, which you can twirl around his finger. I was I was leaning more towards uh, bloody who framed Roger Rabbit. Oh <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Of course. They could have done that so well. I have someone like just kill off with quotation fingers, like Bo, Bo Dallas, and be like, <laughs> have like Bray Wyatt be a detective. <laughs> his, brother, his brother was killed by a man, you know. <laughs> like, who do, like a who done it mystery? Oh God. <laughs> But don't you know? You know, don't you know? Bray Wyatt's still floating face down in the in the relic of reincarnation. You do know that, don't you? He's Lars Sullivan now. It probably wouldn't surprise me. Oh, your your phone's ringing. Yeah. But yes, um, yeah. So that's Undertaker Hall of Fame rumor. I think it is going to happen this year. If not I, this year, next year. It. <laughs> I think it's this year, and I think it's going to bow out this year because it's like it's perfect time, really, isn't it? It is. Like, yeah, get to fuck. I've had enough of you. <laughs> in as nice a way as possible, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, take is one of them where, though, he said, like, in um in, in interviews before, whatever, he's like, I, don't, I just want to go out, go out quietly and stuff. It's like, mate, you've had a career, like. WWE fucking... won't allow that to happen because if you can make money on it, they will. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you've had the career you've had, like you're not just go, you can't just go out quietly like that, like. No, you're not Zack Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, I can't see I can't see him just sort of bowing out, but it's like he's done the whole thing with like he left the hat in the ring or whatever, and he left he left the gloves in the thingy and. Well, that clearly meant shit. Well, so. well, he left he left his boots and he left his hat. Well, at Mania. It's like it's just getting closer, isn't it? So I think it's mm. I think it's calling time now. I, I think this is it. Yeah. I'll be I'll be shocked if he wrestles. It's like I'll be sort of I'm calling it that he's going to wrestle at this year's. Um, I'll be shocked if he wrestles at next year's or even appears at next year's. Yeah, he needs he needs. I think he needs to stop. He needs so. to stop. Even like I say, I I don't, I don't even think there's an on-screen role for him. Um, because he as keeping it key fame, he's not going to be like a GM. He's not going to be a manager. The only thing I can really see him doing is making the odd appearance, like still mm. in gear or whatever. But other than that, like, no, I think he's done. Yeah, I think he's done. Let him have a retirement for fuck's sake. So. You know, he's still going. Let him be. Fucking hell. So, yeah, Undertaker, Hall of Fame. I'm calling it. Well, we're calling it. <laughs> Let us know your thoughts. Yes, absolutely. Tweet us at LAOW Podcast and yeah. let us know. Like William Regal did. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, moving on from that. Uh, it's the Rumble this weekend. 
It is. Uh, my favourite pay-per-view of the year, usually. Ooh. I'm a bit of a rumble, Mark. I, I do quite like me a rumble. So when they, when they first announced it last year, they were doing two rumbles for the women. I was sort of like, yay, but also like, yay. <laughs> well, before the rumble, of course, we've got to have, uh, we've got takeover. Well, yes, we do. So, and that's also in Phoenix, I want to say. It is. It is. It's in a baseball stadium, which is an interesting well, one. Uh, yeah. Obviously, yeah. Takeover isn't, but... Takeover is at ta- ta- Talking Stick Resort Arena and the Rumble's at a baseball field. Yeah. Um, so, Takeover. First of all, we might as well run down the card. We might as well. Predictions. I've not watched much NXT, so... No, I've fallen behind as well, but I'm just going off what I'm reading here. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, first of all, we've got Matt Riddle versus Cassius Ono. Okay. Um, I think that's going to be your curtain jerker. I do genuinely think that's going to be your curtain jerker, and it's going to be a 10-minute o- putting over Matt Riddle. That's what it's going to be. See, I think the tag belts are going first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, possibly to get the card going. Yeah, because you've got... It's, uh, that's on Dispute Era vs. War Raiders, because I think it's it's one of them, but then it's, they might throw it in later because it's you've got the tag belts and then you've got four singles matches. Mm. So... Are so you saying that Matt Riddle versus um, Hassis Ono is going to be a fluffer match? I think it'll go on later. I don't think it'll necessarily go on first. You think it'll go on before the main event? Just before the main event? Right, but, uh, that's, not, that's not how they tend to book TakeOver, is it? Because they tend to book the women's championship match just before the main event. Um, it it depends how long they want Riddle Owner to go. It could, be um, the, it could be United States championship or North American championship that goes on first, thinking about it. I think that will. Yeah, Cause Ricky, then it Because then if it, it could also leave time for them to set up like a triple threat or something later for the the main event, the NXT belt, mm-hmm. which I think might happen with Gargano and Champa. There's a possibility. So, um, so I think, yeah, I reckon it'd be Ricochet Gargano first. Yeah. Um, then Riddle, no, no then uh, War Raiders Undisputed Era for the belts. Yeah. I think then you're going to have Riddle Ono and probably then Baze a bit, be at Bel Air and Champa Black. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm just um, trying to concentrate because the dog's literally just sat next to me, farted and walked away, so. <laughs> Dirty cow. <laughs> oh. So, um, I'll just run it as I'm reading it on the, uh, uh, thing in front of me. So we got uh, Riddle Ono. Uh, it's going to be Riddle. It's gonna, like I say, Ono's going to put Riddle over. I mean, what's, what's Ono got to offer? Now. Not much, really. I mean, exactly. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, there put, he's their talent you go to when you want someone put over. <laughs> it's basically it. So... I mean, a few years ago, yeah, different Matt roll together. Oh no, was one of the well, or, Cass, or Chris Hero was one of the top talents in the world, but not now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's I, I'm gonna go in Riddle because I think there's it's, they're gonna give him a real, like a massive push this year, and I yeah. think I think if anything, he's gonna be challenging for the belt at the Mania Takeover. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't April be shocked. Weekend or whatever the uh, 5th of April, is it? 6th of April? Yeah, something like that. I wouldn't so. be shocked. I would not be shocked. <clears throat> and then uh, Ricochet Gar- Gargano. Ooh, Ricochet Gar- 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 Gargano. Um, Gargano? <laughs> See, both guys are red hot at the minute. Mm. Um, ooh, I don't know. Ricochet's champ at the minute, isn't he? Yeah. Um, 
See, Gargano doesn't need a belt. I'm going to say that Ricochet is going to retain. Mm. I do think Ricochet is going to retain. But I don't know if it's going to involve some sort of fuckery. I don't know. See, I think there's going to be fuckery, but I think Gargano's, Gargano's going to take it. Mm. And then it elevates Ricochet to toward the, the like a main event at the April takeover. Yeah, there's a possibility. Because <clears throat> I reckon if that's gonna, if if Champa retains, you're gonna have like Ricochet Riddle, Black and Champa, mm. follow that in like a four way or something. Okay. Hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure. I am gonna say Ricochet is gonna retain. Still, um, as I don't think Gargano is gonna be on the mate that roster for much longer. Mm. I think he's going to be moved up. So see, I think Gargano has to be one of them that stays in NXT. Hmm. I think he's going to be like a career NXT guy. Could be. I mean, Triple H has said there's going to be guys that want to do that. Mm. So. Oh, I don't know then. I can see Ricochet moving up. Hmm. He's but super. Think... Yeah, he's like. Yeah, but he's... I'm sorry, he'll end up in 205 Live. But that being said, that being said now, it's proven that it's not somewhere that you you get stuck and then you stay there because Mustafa Ali's now on the main roster, per se, on on SmackDown. He's absolutely fucking killing it. Yeah. So, it's one of them. And obviously you've got guys like Daniel Bryan who are under the cruiserweight weight, if that makes sense. And, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a world champion. So yeah. it, it's not, it's not now, obviously, because Mustafa Ali is the example of the, the no recently, you don't get stuck in the 205 live. So it's not like the, as the air quotation, death sentence to your WWE career that it, that it used to be. Mm. So, yeah, fuck it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say Ricochet's uh, retaining, and I think Gargano's going to be up before, just after Mania. Possibly mm. 205 Live. See, I think Gargano's going to be one of them guys that he's going to be like, oh no, and he's going to be like a career next year, because like he's done, he's floated over to Evolve, hasn't he? I think he's done bits of in Evolve or whatever. Yeah. And so I think that's going to be his thing. But what is the turn to do now in NXT? That's the problem. This is true, unless they sort of, unless he gets the belt or something, maybe at TakeOver. Mm. Um, not this one, but unless they put the the North American belt on him, but then I can see him... If he loses against Ricochet, I think it's going to be... You're going to have this match, this multi-man match at the uh, thingy one. Yeah. Uh, the pre main you take over. Yeah. And I think that's where they might put the belt on him. Oh, possibly then. So. But it depends what they do with him and Champa, because it's like the whole, the sort of, they've teased, I think they've teased from what I've read, they've teased uh, DIY reunion a bit, haven't they? Well, they're both heels now, so it's a so, possibility. Yeah. It is a possibility. Uh, other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm sick of Ricochet still. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go with Champa. Uh, yeah, Champa, Gargano Evans. I'm re- reading, reading one thing and looking at something else. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Gargano is gonna win the North American belt, and then this cause this this whole thing where they've. Um, Gargano said to them, or, or yeah, Champa suggested Gargano go after the NXT North American belt, so he and Gargano could take over the world in the NXT. Okay. So I think if but if Gargano wins, Champa's gonna lose. Mm, yeah, there, yeah, there is that as well. Um, but and that just for me that if you explain that solidifies my. Reason is why I think Ricochet is going to retain. Mm. So, 
that might be a bit of a spoiler to what I think is going to happen in the main event, but I've got my reasons for that, and I'll explain them when I get there. Well, my other, my other reason to that is I think if, if Alice Black wins it this weekend, then he'll keep it till the menu takeover. He'll lose it at menu takeover. He'll debut on Raw. Mm, possibility. So. But. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, next up, we've got Undisputed Era versus the War Raiders. Ooh, now then. They've been pushing the War Raiders, haven't they? So. They have. Now you see, I can see them come. I can see Undisputed Era coming up after Mania. So, but that's not going to say that they're going to retain or not. I see uh, them. I see them sort of still sticking around in NXT a bit longer, Undisputed Era, because like there's they're like the big stable at the moment, aren't they in NXT? Yeah. Especially that with them doing like the war games, so that sort of thing as well. I mean, that match was pretty much re. But it was uh, reintroduced just for them, really, wasn't it? Mm. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab in the dark. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say they're gonna check. I, I think they're gonna shake it up a bit. I think they're gonna go. Um, they're gonna put it on War Raiders, leading to a rematch yeah. at the next takeover when. And I do think Undisputed Era will move up to the main roster. Mm. But I also do think as well, when it comes to the main roster after WrestleMania, I think we're going to get a bus flip. Well, like a draft or something, you mean? Or... No, I think a group of people are getting fucked off. Yeah. Oh, like a spring cleaning? Yeah. <laughs> so... Um. <clears throat> It's a possibility because I mean it's like the the roster is pretty crowded at the moment. This is it, and you I mean you're bringing um, more and more people in, which they need to go somewhere because you're gonna. It's like a bottleneck at the minute, isn't it, between NXT and the WWE? You know, it's you got so many people pushing up, you can't get everyone through, and it's just gonna back up and back up and back up. Mm-hmm. So you need to make space on the other side, i.e., widening the bottleneck to allow more people to come in and freshen up the product. Well, it's uh, one of the um, trying to think of the wordage. Well, the tag team divisions, especially on both brands, need need a uh, need a uh, freshening up, especially on SmackDown, because there's only so many times you can have New Day versus uh, <laughs> New Day versus the Usos. <laughs> and I, I could imagine, and I, and I could imagine the disputed era fitting in really well on SmackDown. Yeah, um, but it's what like there was something I was reading the other day where it's they've they've brought in heavy machinery, they brought in EC3 and they brought in uh, Nikki Cross. What well, on SmackDown? Yeah. Well, they said, from what I was reading, it's like they're gonna like Vince wants them to currently be, float between both shows and just appear till, the, <laughs> as I read it and I quote, until they can think of something to do with them. So essentially, what it was, they made room in NXT for more people to come in, but they've not actually got any reason to use these people. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's a bit of overcrowding still. Yeah, they need, so, a, they, need, they need a bus flip because when was the last time we heard a big mass group of people being released? Yeah, true. It's been a few years. I mean, I remember doing a podcast on WrestleBox. But um, this is this is the thing now. We like you, you're getting towards sort of the uh, new territory because like all these other companies now are popping up. Like New Japan's offering more money, and AEW is offering money. And impacts offering money to people to try and get get people in or whatever. And even WWE is like saying, "Oh yeah, new contracts going forward. Once we sign with Fox, they're going to be like pretty much double what they're currently worth or whatever." So, yeah, but if you if you're not making money on somebody now, why would you pay more money to them to not make any money in the future? I mean, look for example, I don't know uh, who's not being used on the main roster at this moment in time. Ty Dillinger, there you go, Ty Dillinger. 
Mm-hmm. Say, for example, he's on a hundred thousand pound a year. Right? Yeah. You're going to tell me they're not making any money on him, right? So you're going to pay him two hundred thousand dollars a year to still make no money. The only people that they increased Ross increased um, salaries are going to be uh, the only people that are going to be affected by it is the people being paid and the people paying the money. Now, why wouldn't you think right? Well, this guy's a dead is is dead wood, he's driftwood, he's fuck all, he's nothing, he's not worth anything to us at this moment in time. Cut the strings, let him go. And if he makes money somewhere else, so be it. But why would you keep money? Why would you throw money down the toilet on somebody that's not making money? How many T-shirts have you seen of people in the crowd, in, in person, knocking around anywhere with people like, for example, having a Ted shirt on for I Dillinger? There isn't many. He's not selling merch. He's not selling. He's not. He's not raising ratings. Send him if you want to. Just release him. If there's any value in him, he'll prove himself in another company. They say, right, well, if you make if, if you if you make money and you get a name for yourself, we've got your number on speed dial. We'll see you in a few years. But at this moment in time, he ain't doing dick, and he's just damaging his reputation, staying where he is because he's comfortable. And it, the WWE aren't raising the guy's uh, what's the word reputation. By having him sit on the sidelines and just chucking money at him. Yeah. He's not, they're just wasting money. Why would you keep that dead weight? Cut it loose, trim the fat, have an absolute stacked roster of people that can work and get you money. Because back, back in the day, Attitude Era, let's be honest, the roster wasn't huge. There was a few people there, but it wasn't as big as it is now. But everyone had a storyline. Everyone had something to do. Everyone drew. There were people, for example, look at the low, lower end of the card, the Job Squad. There was people in the crowd with Job Squad T-shirts <laughs> and things like that. You don't see people with Apollo Crews T-shirts. You don't Not see many. exactly. You don't see people with Ty Dillinger T-shirts. You don't see people with Bludgeon Brothers T-shirts. If they're not making your money, they're not drawing rated. Get them to fuck and bring someone in that will. I don't get all this hoarding. If they're not if they're not making money for you or making a name for you on the main roster within a year, there's clearly something wrong. <laughs> clearly something wrong. Either repackage them, try them again. If they don't work, fuck them off or just fuck them off in general. Send them somewhere else. Send them back to the Indies. Send them to Impact. Send them to New Japan. Wherever. AEW. That's the new meme, isn't it? And the minute everyone, AEW is signing everyone. Yeah. You know what? It's just send them somewhere else. Get them to fuck out your company where they can build a reputation, <laughs> build a following, build, you know, get a well, reputation of actually making money, putting good, good matches rather than sitting in the back and doing nothing. Look at JTG. What's he doing now? Is he still with the company or they finally released him? <laughs> they finally released him. Bloody hell. Years ago. He, he flew under the radar, didn't he? Exactly. But what, yeah, this is it. Apparently, he was, there's rumours that he actually used to hide in the back because he, got, he liked being paid for nothing. So he used to hide. So he didn't get called upon to do a match. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's like, look at Kurt Hawkins. Like, the guy's had like 200 plus losses in a row now or something. And he's another they're, one. They're, they're pretty much making a storyline out of it. Going like he's had some, he hasn't won for like near, t- near two hundred matches or whatever. But he's not over. <laughs> he's not over. He's not making them money. How many people? He had a T-shirt on before he came out and did his special guest referee uh, appearance this week on Raw. He had a T-shirt on where it had Hawkins on it, and it had like short marks. You know, if he was in prison, you mark the days off. Yeah. It was like score marks Well, how many matches he's lost in a row. <laughs> Vince McMahon even says, look, you need to go and find a new line of business <laughs> to him. Because he was asking one more chance. And he agrees to be, he makes him a special guest referee. And it looks like they're starting to repackage him because he kind of got a baby face reaction. Zack Ryder came out for the save against the Revival. And it looks like potentially they're going to be um, bringing back the Edgeheads. Yeah, I noticed that. So, but it kind of, it kind of got a sort of a reaction, but the reaction was more for Zack Ryder. <laughs> so 
So, and Zack Ryder's trunk also had um print on the front that said "Still here." <laughs> so, there you go. Well, but, it's, there's a, there's a lot sort of going on at the moment, isn't there? Like there's there is all this talk of. Um... First of all, I forget to mention it. There's like the talk of Dolph Ziggler hasn't renewed his contract, and he's, he's another one though. He's another one. How many times have you? Okay, he could do a fantastic fucking <laughs> match, right? But he's not drawing money. He's not drawing ratings. You, well, how he's... many times do you repackage him? He's still the same. Get him to fuck. If you, he's one of these guys that's going to work absolutely brilliant somewhere like New Japan. Well, WWE isn't New Japan. Well, he's um, from what I've seen on Twitter and stuff, he's changed his name to. He's still he's still on at, at heel Ziggler. Um, but he's changed his actual his actual name is I actually said Nick Namath. There's, uh, there's a few there's a few people that have done that though. That's to be fair. He's but he's uh, apparently like from what I've read and things like that. He's not happy. Obviously not happy with his current run and things like that, and he's not been happy for quite a while. No, because he's been bitched out so, to McIntyre, hasn't he? But well, this is the part of the thing I've read. Like you're saying, uh, if people are saying now that they're genuinely not happy and all this sort of thing, then WWE is sort of now starting to give them give them a push to try and keep them there or make them happy. But there's talk of like I think they've offered Ziggler a new contract. Is it either January? End of February or end of March, his contract's up. And there's talk of him not renewing and doing... Because he wants... I know he's still stand-up before. He wants to move possibly into, into more stand-up. But then they're worried, like, well, if I let him go, he might go to an AEW. It's like kicking their money. <laughs> oh, AEW will not be competition, though. There'll be an alternative. There's a difference. They cater in towards, like, the sort of, like, you know, the skinny, bullet club-wearing, smarky crowd. And if you look at Cody Rhodes, no, Cody Christ's Twitter, sorry, you've got to give him his proper name. Um, <laughs> it's all lefty liberal shit that he's writing. And I'm not saying it's all a shite opinion. Obviously, you're entitled to your opinion. Mm. But that anyone that's like, he thinks other, other, you know, in any other way than he does, you're a racist, essentially. <laughs> if you look at it, one of his comments is what like, did. Um, so something about right is I don't know I've got it somewhere here written down. Just bear with me. But he he had a comment like he made a tweet and it was um, addressed to certain people. Um, one second, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go. It was aimed at um, the government, who are obviously leading right in America. With yeah. Donald Trump and whatever he goes, dear government, go back to work, please. As someone who flies for work every week, I can't have the airport shutting down because of the tweet. Because of a tweet. Also, the other thousand problems that standstill creates, no one gives a shit about a wall. Regards everyone who is not racist. Yeah, that's a bit questionable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's, he's gone on to the attack of people who are not like liberal. Or anything like that, mm. and it's that's that, to me that's what he's aiming at. That's what the marketing this AEW for. Like for example, Jim, uh, what was it? All in Vince Russo, for example, wasn't <laughs> wasn't welcome. They singled him out. Went, you're not fucking welcome, mate. <laughs> Things like that. You know, it's they're gonna they're gonna um, they're gonna over what's the word over specialize their market. Where if you're not a certain demographic, they're gonna, you're going to be feel alienated if you're watching this. Yeah. And I can't see it working. You need to be generalistic. You need to be hit as many people as possible, you know, in the demographic wise. Whereas mm. I'm not saying WWE do that, but they're doing a better job of it than what Cody Rhodes has done. And there's not even a show been done yet. There's not a show been done by AEW. And I think they're always specialised in the market already. And it's just only set yourself up to fall. I do think it's going to make money because there's people that are going to fucking worship this and throw money like it's, like it's you know, going out of fashion. 
Yeah. But I don't think it's going to make the money. Uh, it's going to go, right, we're going to revolutionise the wrestling business. It's going to be a jumped-up ROH. That is what it's going to be. It's going to be ROH with lights. <laughs> that is what it's going to be. <laughs> It'll be an ROH with, with bells and whistles. <laughs> and the fact is, as well, if you've heard about the legal thing about Cody Rhodes trying to get the rights for all in off ROH... Because shock horror, ROH funded all in, everybody. Mm. Worst kept secret in all of wrestling. Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks are trying to get the rights for all for uh, all in. And who's, who is it who's in charge? Who's, who's funding the uh, AEW? Is it the Khan Brothers or whatever it's called? The, the, the Khan family, yes. Yeah, uh, Khan family. They own the Jacksonville Jaguars, is it, I think? Well, they won't pony up to pay for the rights for it. So what does that tell you? Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to get as much money as people think it's going to get thrown at it. They're going to get a few big names that they're going to need to pay over the fucking odds for. But then you're going to get supplemental talent that won't be... It'll be on NXT money at most. At most. So... The, I don't think people expecting that it's going to be sort of like some big payday for all their indie darlings. It's not going to be. It really isn't. <laughs> That's my opinion on that. I think it's a load. Of, I, I, I think I, I, I want to be wrong. Don't get me wrong. I want to be wrong. I want there to be a genuine challenger or a number two to WWE. AEW isn't going to be it though. I don't think it's going to be it. I think currently your only your nearest uh, challenger is New Japan. Agreed. But it's not on a wide enough. It's not like it's not worldwide like no. WWE is in terms of TV and stuff. No, but the thing is about New Japan is they've got the market that they've aimed at before in the past, which is mm. Japan, and they've got that cornered and they make all the money from it there. The fact that they're spreading their wings to go abroad. Is in a similar fashion as to what WWE have recently been doing with the UK tournament and the UK UK thing. They've got the foothold yeah. here, and eventually what they're doing is they're globalising and having different territories all over the world. Now, New Japan haven't gone that far, but they've introduced a US championship. Yeah. So they're sort they've of got... marketing themselves, into trying to open the market up in the US. For... Well, they've got... Uh... They've got a US dojo as well now. Exactly. So it's it's only the same sort of thing as the, as WWE setting up a performance center in the UK, which is what they have done. Mm. So they're doing the opposite way. They're well, not doing the opposite way, but they're doing it the same sort of way WWE are, where they're globalizing the market. They've cornered one market, and then they're opening up the they're opening up the or spreading their wings and going into different markets where they know there is a interest for that product, and they're going to do it now. If I was New Japan, obviously you got to think, right, where are the markets? Where are the main markets for wrestling? And I would say the four main markets is Japan, North America and Mexico, the United Kingdom and maybe Australia. They're your main markets. And, uh, yeah, North America. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and they've gone for where... Obviously, they've gone to a major market, and they've chosen the US. Whereas the UK has got, well, the US has gone right. Well, we know New Japan's pretty much got a stranglehold in Japan. This is why shock horror. You don't see pay per views in Japan, and they've gone right. We'll go to the UK because it's obviously it's you know very similar to what we are. We know for a fact there's an interest there because they've got a booming in, indie scene. Let's go over there and go and make a few quid. I think they're fucking mm-hmm. clever for it. Absolutely, 100%. You know, kudos for him for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we've gone from takeover to that. Fantastic. Uh, well, it's not even finished takeover yet, to be fair. I know. We went on a massive, <laughs> we went on a massive tangent. I love it. So, uh, yeah. On this future era, War Raiders have become a degree of a winner. Um, I'm I'm saying War Raiders. Raiders. See, I'm inclined to stick with the Undisputed Era. Mhm. I think there's going to be fuckery. 
Yeah, I, I will be. I think there will be fuckery involved somewhere along the line. I don't know if it's going to be in this match or not, but we'll see. I think there will. It's either going to be a new team to come in and take them out, or it's going to like, take out the War Raiders, or it's going to be someone. Uh, there's going to be an undisputed era is going to get help mm. like, from the other guys, like because I know Adam Cole's in that World Collide tournament. Um, yeah. But there's nothing for Bobby Fish to do unless he's still off injured. No, Bobby Fish is still he's, he's going round, but I think we're kind of horsemen in that shit. Uh, um, but what I would think would be best is if the if before they go, if they are if they do retain, mm. I do think Bobby Fish or Roderick Strong. Say the tag tag, the same the tag the tag traps is Roderick Strong and Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah. Then Rod, I think for me, Bobby Fish should go for the U.S. Championship. The North American Championship, sorry, and have um, Adam Cole go for the world hev- the hev- the NXT belt, and then have all the belts before they go. <laughs> and, then, uh... and, may- and then maybe have a takeover somewhere, and then have it called NXT Takeover Takeover Undisputed. Or maybe a, maybe have a special at the at full sale, have the NXT take over undisputed, and have it where they all defend their belts and obviously lose them all, <laughs> and then move up. Possibly. So that would be cool. That'd be a good idea. Or maybe or maybe just keep lose a couple, keep a couple, and then obviously there's no reason why. Well, Kevin Owens did it. He he debuted on the main roster as NXT champion, so there's no reason why, for example, um, Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong couldn't be tag belt champions in NXT, yet still appear on maybe SmackDown in a tag team division. So there's no reason why they couldn't do it, and then obviously they'd lose it on a taping. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's a strange one because I don't, I don't see, I couldn't see him walk it just like happily saying, yeah, you can walk into, you can walk onto one of the main shows, whatever, with with the all and all the NXT belts, whatever. I can't see that happening really. It's in terms of like a booking sense, I don't think they'd let it happen. No, no, no. I meant about some, just like maybe one one of the the championships. Oh like yeah, tag team belts or something like that. Yeah. I could well, see him no, doing that. I wouldn't do that because I buried the entire fucking NXT roster. So, <laughs> yeah, that, that's not a good idea. But maybe the tag team belts or if Kylo, if, if, if um, Roderick, not Roderick Strong, um, Adam Cole is NXT champion, maybe him come up with that belt and obviously it puts them over as a big deal. Mm. Like Kevin Owens mm-hmm. did when he took on John Cena and he still had the NXT championship. He was instant main event material from that point onward. So, well, Adam Adam Cole's in the uh, the Worlds Collide tournament mm. happening on Access Weekend this weekend. Yeah. Um, where it's all the entrants if they win they get a uh, they can face for the title of their choice from the UK NXT or Cruiserweight belt. It's under two hundred five. Oh, okay. So, so I think Adam Cole's winning that then. Well, there's, you've got there's for NXT you've got Adam Cole, Vera Sun Dream, Dominic Dijakovic. Am I saying that right? Donovic Dijak. Donovic Dominic Dijak. Dijak Dijakovic, I think it is. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, he's in it. Keith Lee and Shane Fawn. Hmm. Uh, for NXT UK, you've got Mark Andrews, Tyler Bate, Travis Banks, Jordan Devlin, and Zach Gibson. Okay. And then for 205 Live, you've got Cedric Alexander, Tony Nese, Drew Gulak, TJP, and Humberto Carrillo. Okay. Um, but there is, they're having a Battle Royal first, and the winner of the Battle Royal gets a buy in, buy in the first round. And then it's like a bracketed tournament to... Like whoever wins gets the belt of their gets to face for the belt of their choice. It'd be, so. I, it, it screams Adam Cole. That I'm sorry, but it does. Uh, um, it depends. It depends when they're going to actually do the event, though, because that's they've not specified like 
when when the uh, when the what's it's for the uh, the uh, title match. So is it like isn't it going to be on the next takeover? Is it going to be on a, a taping? Is it going to be? They've not it, specified that yet. So it, it'd be more than likely be a taping, I'd imagine. A space filler between now and uh, WrestleMania. Yeah. So I'd imagine it'd be somewhere along them lines. Mm. So. But yeah, we've got the rest of this takeover card. We've got three <laughs> yeah, matches. So, uh, Shayna Baszler, Bianca Belair. Um, I can't see anything other than Shayna Baszler. Yeah, I see her still dominating. Yeah. I mean, as uh, as, as uh, different as she, as Bianca Belair is, um, no, I, I, I Shayna Baszler has been put across as a killer. Someone like Bianca Belair is just not believable that she would get beaten, beat her. So, yeah, I'd go. With, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Shayna Baszler. I think I am as well. Yeah, that was quite quite quick and simple. <laughs> Um, it's I've, I'm not convinced from what I've seen from Bianca Belair because all she, it's like her whole gimmick is basically I whip I whip people with my hair. Yeah, but it's different at least. It and is, and it sounds but... fucking brutal. Yeah. So I'll give it I'll give her that, but I don't think that's enough. Hmm. So. Um... Yeah, so I don't know. I'm going. I'm going to say I'm going to go with Shayna Baszler. That's all. That's all, all the input I've got on that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm going to lean towards Shayna. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know if it's going to still do this whole like four horsewomen thing, aren't they? Yes. But so I've got, yeah. Well, I've been mentioned on a tweet about that. Uh, the four horsewomen. Um, there's a guy on Wrestling Soup. If you listen to Wrestling Soup as well as us, uh, called Joey Numbers, he's one of the hosts, mm. and he said something about um, got the tweet here um, about the fake. It was pre- pre- apparently it's been proven it's fake, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, what was it saying now? It says Ronda has said in the past that she wanted a normal life and has a few kids, a few kids with her husband. No one should be shocked. This is the most what most people want, and people get into their thirties have to consider that WWE. Consider that WWE should have planned for the short term with her. So obviously, apparently, she's got a record saying that she wants kids and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So I replied to uh, Joey Numbers and says, why not? Go away, birth a sprog, get back into training, and come back for that horsewoman versus horse horsewoman WWE versus horsewoman UFC match in a WrestleMania or two. Checks would write themselves and she'd get the time off to start a family, win win. Mm. So there was rumors about her leaving after WrestleMania so she could have kids. Do it! Fucking do it. You know why? Uh- you know why? Because people anticipate you coming back. I I, I heard about this one, but then as a, apparently if I saw a WWE source told TMZ she is locked into a contract till 2021. Well, that don't mean shit because it, it be, uh, giving, birth, giving birth to a child is a private matter. It's got nothing to do with WWE. It's not a contract of... Uh, it's not a breach of contract. If that's the case, and you're talking about health issues being a breach of contract... Why is no why is not Roman Reigns anyone pulled up Roman Reigns for the fact that he's got leukemia as a breach of fucking contract? Mm. It's a it's a it's a health con, it's not a health condition but it's a thing that will stop her from wrestling due to her condition. WWE can't turn around and fire Ronda Rousey and release her from the contract because she's going to get pregnant because they'll get done for unfair dismissal. Well, the only thing they could really do in that case is they probably put a freeze on the contract. Possibly, but um, if you're getting up there in age, like Ronda Rousey, well, not like the same Ronda Rousey's old, she's younger than I am, for fuck's sake. But mm. age 31, and you've not had kids, as a woman, I'm assuming you think, right, shit, clock's ticking. Yeah. And if she's married and got the right bloke and she wants to have a child, 
WWE can't stop her doing that. <laughs> and not only that, she's not stuck for money. So she potentially has WWE over a fucking barrel. If they went, right, bye, contract, see you later. All she's got to turn around and go, okay, then I'll have my kid. I'll get him back into training. Um, oh, no, wait. She needs, do, you need, do you need to make some money? Um, <laughs> AEW, do you want to make some money? Yeah, they've got them over the fucking barrel if she does that. So what will WWE will do, they'll go, yes, sir, no, sir, three bags full, sir, because Ronda Rousey draws. Ronda Rousey is over. And Ronda Rousey, in my opinion, is the most improved wrestler of 2018. <laughs> you do not get rid of someone like that just because they want a family. What you do is you work it into a fucking storyline and build hype. She gets pregnant, she goes off, she has a child, she gets into training. Someone like her will not take long to get back into fucking peak physical fitness. Mm. She might miss, she's going to work this WrestleMania, she might miss next WrestleMania. She will be back by the next WrestleMania if she gets pregnant (coughs) straight away. That is when you build your horsewomen versus horsewomen match. Because even if she's not at peak physical fitness, she can sit out for most of the match, but you're still drawing with the other three members of the, you've still got the other three members of the horsewomen. That could take the bulk of the load. That's the way you yeah. do it. That's if she wants to go away and have a child. And she'd still be technically in contract as well there. Mm. So it's a non-story, if you ask me. Yeah, she might be in contract. She might be in, signed up for another couple of years. That doesn't help stop her having a child if she wants one. <laughs> There's no reason why she can't do that. Yeah. So it's one of them. But yeah, I... I, I do think you know she's one of the horsemen? She will be. It'll eventually, it will happen, and I think she'll. I think Shayna Baszler will lose the belt before WrestleMania, and I think Shayna Baszler is going to be coming up to the Raw roster. So initially, if if Ronda Rousey is still wrestling, so initially possibly team up with Ronda Rousey and then turn on her for maybe SummerSlam, or she'll go to SmackDown. And she'll be the dominant woman there. Mm. I can see that happening. So. Because then it opened up possibilities that like you got Ronda, the, you got Asuka, Shayna Baszler and stuff. Well, this is it. I mean, you've so... got, you, you, you potentially, you've got, well, Asuka's got the belt. You've got certain, you know, they've, they've all fought each other before for the belt and stuff like that. So bringing Shayna Baszler to SmackDown would open doors up for Asuka to have, you know, fresh you know new matches and things like that so that would make sense mm. um but obviously you could have an interbrand special match sort of thing we're saying that they're supposedly getting rid of the brands by the time that happens so yeah mm. you could you could do the horsewomen either way it doesn't really matter but it, 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 it if it, if if ronda rousey does want a family um she'll probably go away have a kid and then come back and that's when the horsewomen match will happen that's my personal opinion because you can she can take a lot of the load off. Mm. So yeah, main event takeover time. Yes, yeah, so we've got uh, Tommaso Champa, Alistair Black. Um. Now I did initially think that Tommaso Champa was going to retain because we're on, uh, Alistair Black is coming up to the main roster, but what I do remember is they've just had a load of people come up to the main roster, so. What I think is going to happen is I think this feud is going to carry on. I think that I think Alistair Black's going to win it back. You're going to have um, and then you're going to have going into TakeOver just before Mania, you're going to have um, Champa take on black again but i think there's going to be some sort of gimmick involved well like i said before the way i see it going is possibly if black wins it's going to be like at least like a multi-man match at the pre-mania takeover mm. black will drop the belt then and he'll debut on raw the night after that's what i think um, as well the only other thing i could think is maybe if he wins to, if he wins the belt, the other thing I can see is possibly Champer enters at number 30 in the Rumble tomorrow on Sunday. There is that, but I've got another feeling something else is going to happen. 
Um, I genuinely do think it. Well, I'm I'm partially speculating because this whole thing of like, uh, our truth is gonna is apparently gonna like number thirty in the rumble. It's like, no, nah, mate, not happening. No, that's gonna change. That's gonna change. That's designed for someone to jump him. Yeah. But I think I know what's gonna happen. Oh, speculation. Mm, I've got a speculation there, so we shall see. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's takeover pretty much covered. I know we was very brief on the main event, but there's not really much to talk about on that one, is there? No, it's just it's a strange one because it's like we said enough already with like the Gargano stuff and. Well, it's, yeah. It's. Uh, I don't know. It's. A strange one because like, they've they done it before they had the rematch like when they had they did Shinsuke Bobby Roode and things mm-hmm. like that so yeah I just think there's gonna be fuckery yeah I think Gargano's gonna get involved somewhere along the line <laughs> uh, yeah. whether, whether it's against Black or against Champ or against both of them we'll see it could end up being mm. a no contest where uh, Gargano comes in and attacks them both. Maybe. Setting up a three-way, potentially. Yeah. So it, it could happen. So that would actually be make make sense, actually. I think that's what I'm going to call, actually. It's going to be a no contest. <laughs> I'm going to call it now. It's going to be a no contest, and Gargano's going to get himself involved and set up a three-way for the pre, pre-take, pre-mania takeover. Mm. And that's, that's what I think. Fuck it. Fuck it. Nice. So, moving on next, we've got the Rumble, the we've Royal the, Rumble itself. The Royal Rumble predictions. Now, you've you got the card written down because I have it. I've got it here in front of me. Yeah. Right. Do you want to go through the order you've got then, and then? Well, they've got there's two title matches announced for the pre-show. Yes. Uh, you've got. So first of all, you got Bully Murphy versus Akira Tozawa versus Hideo Tami versus Callisto for the cruiserweight belt. That's e- that's going to be Buddy Murphy to retain. Out of all that, the only two people I could see—it's not going to be Callisto. Um, and I can't see it being Hideo Itami. Um, the only two people that potentially I think it could end up being is either Tozawa or Buddy Murphy. But Buddy Murphy's over. Yeah. And he's having a good run with it. So I, I can't see him not having the belt at Mania. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be Buddy Murphy. See, I'm going, I'm leaning more towards Hideo. Because okay. I think, I think he'd be, he's one of them, like he's uh, going into it as the possible underdog. Because he's not, he's not really done much in terms of, Surprisingly, he's not done much in like with his NXT stuff. Like he's well, he's been constantly injured, hasn't he? Yeah. When they put him on two hundred five live, and he hasn't really done much of anything yet. Like he hasn't. I don't think he's challenged much. I could be wrong. I'm probably completely wrong here, but I've not seen him challenging much of anything. No. Um, and I think it's going to be one of them. He's going to possibly steal the belt or steal the win, and that's going to lead to a rematch at Mania of like. Uh, Murphy, Itami. Yeah, possibility there. And Mur- Murphy will get the big win at Mania. Okay, there's a possibility yeah. there. Massive shrug of the shoulders then. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so if I'm going to take a stab in the dark, I'm saying it's Buddy Murphy. So. Uh, you tired? <laughs> just just the, co- the coffee's not kicked in yet. Mine's wearing off. <laughs> uh, for on you on the also on the pre-show now you got Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh god, what a sad match this is! <laughs> you got two guys massively over at some point, shape or form. You got Rusev, who got a give just literally one two words over to this day. I watched SmackDown. He was no oh yeah yeah I think he had a brief moment on SmackDown. As a US champion, bear in mind. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah, he's nowhere. And then you've got Shinsuke Nakamura. 
The mm. worst wrestler of 2018 in regards to effort. <laughs> He has he he's basically been the WWE's yellow pages because he's been phoning it in some at Chronic. <laughs> Sh- Sh- Shinsuke on speed dial. Yeah, <laughs> and you can see I, I can say this year this year seriously last year he may as well be called Shitsuke Nakamura. Mm. It, it's been awful, absolutely awful. Uh, someone was it? I heard someone called him the other way. He was like Shitstain. Yeah, Shitstain Nakamura, <laughs> and he's rather not wrong. Not wrong at all, but he's, you know, I'm not a fan at all now. I mean, he's literally there. He's taking his money and he's going home. That is literally all he's doing. He's phoned it in some at Chronic ever since WrestleMania last year. Oh, yeah. He's been fucking he's... dire. If anything, I think he's, because he's, how old is he now? He's not. 37, he's... something like that. Yeah, he's 37, 38, so he's knocking on a bit. In terms yeah, of but, he's, but then you've got AJ Styles that are pushing the. Well, they're in for. The, he's in his forties now, mm. and he's still doing what he's doing. And then you've got Nakamura who doesn't do all that high flying shit. He's, he just strikes hard. And you're telling yeah. me you got people like fucking um, was it PCO and what have you still going in their fifties? Yeah, PCO is fifty and still doing moon salts and all sorts. Exactly. <laughs> So 38, 37, 38, he's, a, he's still a fucking puppy. In a way. But there's no reason you can't put effort in. Ric Flair put the effort in. And he was in his 50s and he was still wrestling. Mm. You know, it's... Undertaker, okay, you can't do the half the shit he used to do anymore. But he still put the fucking effort in. You know, he's... He's still diving over top ropes and shit like that, like a fucking mentalist. You know, okay, he might not be doing it recently, but not that long ago he was doing the fucking suicide dive mm. and things like that. You know, it. there's no reason why he is being as fucking lax as he is, apart from just, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm getting me cash, I don't care. Yeah. So, in that respect, I hope Rusev retains. I don't want Nakamura anywhere near that US Championship. And I want to say bye bye, see you later, go back to fucking New Japan. <laughs> uh, yes. I remember this time last year, we were fucking stoked. He won the Royal Rumble. We're like, oh my God, we've got a fucking dream match at WrestleMania with AJ yeah, Styles. I, yeah, I remember. And we were pumped, absolutely pumped, and it absolutely was part one of the main reasons why that second half of WrestleMania fucking sucked. <laughs> it was almost unwatchable that second half of WrestleMania last year. And it just got worse and worse and worse and worse, and he was one of the main reasons why it got what it just fucking went downhill. It was fucking atrocious. Yeah. It's like it's like I got the WrestleMania payday. Right, all efforts out the window now. I'll just work, I'll just sit out my contract essentially. I partially reckon he is, but mm. it seems like they've they've said uh, the thing he said a couple of times like he's noticeably comfortable in his role because like he's he's moved over from Japan and they they can't see him wanting to get released to then have to move back to Japan to join New Japan. Like they, re- they reckon he's going to sort of stay in America now. Um, but, like, he was stellar in NXT. He was putting on brilliant matches and stuff. And they got to the got to the main roster. He had that brilliant match with Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. Uh, because he wasn't earning the big money then, and he obviously obviously got the main roster payday. And was, oh shit! I don't actually have to work that hard now. Yeah. And then you get people like AJ Styles that are pulling on Matt. Okay, I I don't I you know at one point I didn't like the man, but he's pulling it out week in week out. Is that's the that's who you need to be. The guy you know he's in peak physical position now. And he could deal. He could probably still do what he's doing now for another three or four years. 
Easy. Yeah. But Nakamura, let's fuck off. Go away and make room for someone that actually wants to be there. <laughs> just fuck off to New Japan and just cruise with your mates there. Mm. Rather than taking up a spot on the roster, a spot on a pay-per-view of someone that actually wants to be there and wants to make a name for themselves. Yeah. So, that's, so that's my prediction. Rusev, Nakamura can fuck off. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's going to be one of them. Uh, I can see Shinsuke possibly winning. But I just see it. It's like it's, it'd be shitting on the belt if anything. It'd be shitting on Rusev as well. He's tried all sorts to try and get himself over, and he's got a little bit of a reward for it now. Mm. So, oh. um, yeah. But at the same time, while we're on the top of the US belt, can we get a new one? Yeah, it's been it's like, been the same for a long time, hasn't it? it it's currently the, the oldest current belt they've got, like in terms of design. All the other belts have had a revamp or they've they brought them back or whatever. And the US title is the only one that stayed the same. Well, I've got a thing. I've got a reason I think that they're going to do that because I think when the when the new deal comes over, I think they're just going to fucking unify the US and the Intercontinental. What's the point of bringing out a new belt for six for a year? Keep the old one and then just unify it with the uni- Intercontinental. Yeah. Um, unless they bring out another secondary belt. Well, I've always but, said I've always said that they should have a TV belt that they defend strictly on the TV shows. Hmm. At least it'll give you something to tune in for. And have it exclusive to people who have never been a world champion. Yeah. Any weight, any any weight class, you know, you just go for it. If you're cruise weight, you can challenge for it. If you, you're super heavyweight, you can challenge for it. I could as... I could see them doing like what um, Progress has done, where they've done like the the Atlas belt, mm. which is for people over two hundred five. Yeah, there is that. That's a good call. So, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I'm moving on next. We've got the Bar versus the Miz and Shane McMahon for the SmackDown tag belts. Right, I'm going with Shane and Miz to win this. And the reason I'm saying that is it's going to set up for a match between Shane and Miz at WrestleMania. Because I think what's going to happen, they're going to go defend it. There's going to be sort of a bit of a falling out, leading out like at, they're sowing the seeds mm. coming up after this. Um, and I think Shane's going to get sick of his bullshit and turn on him at, at Elimination Chamber. Yeah. Leading it to, to a match of a face Miz versus heel Shane. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. <laughs> That's, that's Pre- I predict- think. Predictably so. Yeah, and I think the bar will obviously get their rematch and be champions going into WrestleMania again. As long as we don't get Strowman and Nicholas again. Then I, I, you, you will witness me bludgeon my face against the wall if that <laughs> happens again. So. So yeah, yeah Shane and Miz for that reason. Um, see, I think the bar are going to retain, and that will lead to the whole Shane will blame Miz and vice versa. Do you not think it's a bit far away though to start that? No, because WWE mm. is what they'll do. They'll That's... lead. They might have like a rematch, maybe at uh, Fast Lane or what, Elimination Chamber, whatever's next pay per view after the Rumble. Um, but otherwise, I can just see it being that sort of them going for that because it, it depends how long they have between the pay-per-view though and the 
a mania because it's no doubt gives me five or six weeks of build or something. Yeah. So, and it's gonna be no doubt it's more than where it's gonna they're gonna put have like everything but like nothing happening there. It's gonna be like shit with mania in two weeks. We better start building some feuds. Um, shit, shit, shit. Uh, yeah, shame is fuck it. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I'm going with that. That's what I'm going with. I'm going, like I say, Shane and Miz. Uh, next up, we've got Ronda Rousey versus Sasha Banks for the Royal Women's Championship. Can't see anything but Ronda Rousey keeping the belt till Mania. Snap. Yeah, Sasha Banks. <laughs> no, no, I don't like. I don't want Botcher Banks. I mean, even a shorts botched on her today. That's on the on. Raw, so. Yeah, yeah, I heard. <laughs> no, not for me. Um, I don't rate Sasha Banks at all. Um, mm. I just Ronda Rousey's keeping that because she's money. Yeah. So yeah, Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey all the way. Absolutely. No argument, sir. <laughs> and uh, next up, we got Asuka versus Becky Lynch for the Women's Championship. See, now this is tough. This is tough. Um, but for reasons I'm going to go into later, mm. Asuka's, uh, Asuka's retaining. Okay. Asuka's retaining. Becky Lynch is not going over in this. It, mm. may, be, it may, be involved, may involve fuckery, and I think it will involve fuckery, but Asuka's going over. Mm. And I also think... I also think the SmackDown Women's Championship is going to open the show up, the main show. All right. Hmm, intriguing. See, I, I want to say Asuka because I love Asuka. But mm. I really like the stuff Becky Lynch is doing. Yeah. So I'm torn. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I know I've, I've heard the rumours of what they're possibly setting up for at Mania. Uh, so. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> as as uh, what's his name always says on the X Factor, Louis Walsh, I can't decide, I can't decide, I can't decide. <laughs> we need an answer, Louis. I, I can decide. No, you got to pick one. I, I can decide. So, it, dip it. Any, uh, mini, miny, mo. I can't even do that because then I'll still... Uh. <laughs> well, I've gone through booking what I think potentially could happen, so... There is. I'm sort of going through the booking in my head of what I've seen and what's rumoured to be happening, so... But... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> he doesn't know. I don't. I can decide. I can decide. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to skip that one then? I'll I'll come back to that one. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Ask her. <laughs> Next up, we've got Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. Oh, now then, Daniel Bryan is fucking money in this gimmick. He is money. He is fucking fantastic. Um, yeah. I can't see him losing that belt before Mania again either. Um, so I'm gonna go with Daniel Bryan going over. Uh, but it's gonna be one of them. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be an absolutely fucking amazing match. So I don't want to say it's gonna be an amazing match because we got ourselves hyped over, hyped up for Shinsuke AJ at Mania last year, and that turned out to be a complete shit show. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be good. I don't know who, if any of them, either of them are feuding with anyone else that could cause fuckery. I'm guessing not. Um, I don't think there is. Um, uh, I think Brian's going to retain, mm. but I can see it leading to a multi-man match at Mania 
for this belt. Because hmm. they'll have at least what at least one of the matches has got to be a multi man. They want they can't they want this all be one on one to be at least one multi man. I think this will be it. Yeah. Um. Because of the stuff like they're possibly doing with if like Lesnar is going to still they're still teasing Strowman with your Lesnar at Mania and all that sort of shite. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. I, Possibly, Brian. I'm gonna I'm gonna go Brian, but I don't know what happens then to AJ. Like what to, what to do with AJ afterward? Mm, I'm not sure. So it could still technically be in the in because don't forget you got elimination chamber coming up, so you could actually. Shoehorn AJ Styles back into there as well. Yeah. So there is a way, ways around it. So I don't know. I'm still saying Daniel Bryan's keeping that belt. I'm going to go with Bryan, but I just can't see what the future holds for AJ if he loses. Um, with a US Championship. Hope it's but it just seems like a bit of a like a shit show match for him then. Like we're just giving his matches because there's nothing else for you to do. Yeah, there is that as well. But suppose uh, they could actually bring Alistair Black up and they could have a feud. So that's where I'm thinking Black might do come in at number thirty in the rumble. Mm, there's a possibility. He, if he appears, takes out Truth, maybe comes in heel and they work him against AJ. That could work. That could work. But I, um, yeah, I'll go into one, another a couple of, um, a couple of uh, rec- uh, predictions for the Rumble in a minute anyway. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, Daniel Bryan, I think, is retaining. Yeah, I'll go with Bryan. But mm, I'm undecided on that one. It's a bit of a difficult yeah, one. Yeah, it's what you do with AJ Styles afterwards. Yeah. So, ooh. and up next, it's Brock Lesnar versus Finn Balor for the Universal Championship. Sorry, Finn. <laughs> I Brock Lesnar's retaining. All right, next up is the Women's Royal Rumble match. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So now, apparently, from what I've heard, Lesnar handpicked Balor. Yeah. To be his opponent once the found Strowman wasn't wasn't going to be cleared in time. Um, he's, he's over as fuck though, he's Finn, let's be honest. He's one of the second, he's like one of the most popular co- guys on the roster. He is over, but I think there's a lot of stuff saying, Oh, is he is he gonna be Demon Finn? It's like, well, does he need to be? Well there's rumours say that he's never he's he's get, trying to get away from the demon character. Yeah. So I don't think you're gonna see him in paint for a very, very long time. Mm. Um I mean it was good while it lasted. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I can't sort of see him doing it again, like against someone like Lesnar. No. Um, it's a difficult one because I, if if they're gonna, if they're going to go the way of having like Lesnar do what he did to Samoa Joe where he wins in like 15 minutes or something daft. Yeah. And uh, he I don't think I can't I don't think Joe got much offence in but it's still Joe still looked good. And it got him a lot of praise and stuff backstage. So whether that ha- maybe that happens uh, but like if if Balor goes into the mania as the champ, then who is he facing? Oh, yeah. This is it. But the thing is, though, you could also... You could fuck around with that. If Balor did go over, you could have people like Seth Rollins and things like that. Well, this is part this part of the story, isn't it? It's going in as like, oh, Vince McMahon doesn't believe in me and all this sort of thing. Mm. 
Um, so, ooh. it's a tough, it's a toughie. I'm still thinking that Brock Lesnar is going to go over, and I think you're going to have. Um, I genuinely think you're going to have Seth Rollins versus um, Finn Balor. That mind you. Yeah. For the maybe the IC. See, I could see them doing that, yeah. Because um, then the other came to mind, but that my booking idea that just came up then factors in the men's rumble match. Mm. Which we can segue into. Yeah, we'll do that then. So, the men's rumble match. Mm, now then. I've no, I haven't got a list of current announced people or anything, so I don't, well, I don't know. Mm. I don't know where to fucking start with this. Um, of all the people that are obviously not in main of it, all these matches, um, potential. I say he brought, he's Braun Strowman technically injured. Still. Yes. Yeah, he's still not cleared. Apparently. Right. So he, obviously he's not going to be in this. But you've got uh, who else? You've got potentially returning Kevin Owens. Mm. Um. You've obviously got people like you know um. You've got Cesaro. Uh. But you've got more likely it's going to be someone like Dean Ambrose or. Well, I've got a list here of. Who has been entered so far? Well, go on. Uh, so we've got R Truth, uh, Drew McIntyre, ooh. The New Day, all three of them. It's not going to be them. Uh, Seth Rollins, mm-hmm. Jeff Hardy. No, it's not going to be him. Dean Ambrose, Samoa Joe. That's a dark uh, horse, actually. John Cena, but then it's he's questionable because of his ankle injury, with quotation it's, fingers. Or prior commitments, I've heard. Yeah, but in terms of storyline, it's like, oh, he's got he's injured his ankle, but then he's like, oh, he's doing a movie. Yeah. Again, so. Uh, Elias, Baron Corbin, Jinder Mahal, Apollo Crews, Andrade, Rey Mysterio, Mustafa Ali, and Titus O'Neil. Well, Titus O'Neil will fall under the ring again. Um... <laughs> Out of them, like, it's more likely it's going to be Dean Ambrose or Seth Rollins. Um, but I like the idea of a Samoa Joe winning it. See, I'm going completely left field here. Carmella. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Carmella. Carmella beats up. Uh, Carmella beats up our truth. Yeah. <laughs> Well, truth for their lying backstage, like it, a pipe just drops next to him. Yeah. And you see a figure stood over him. It's Carmella, <laughs> and then Big Cass just appears behind her. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's I. I reckon McIntyre's gonna win. Oh yeah, he's he's probably likely. But I'll tell you who else could win it? Mm. Becky Lynch. Oh yeah, the man. I'm not joking. Um, <laughs> you're talking about someone jumping. Mm. Well, I obviously I said to you, Asuka is going to be the reason why Asuka's going to win, and there's reasons why. Well, I yeah. think there's going to be fuckery involved. Yeah. Becky Lynch is going to go. Hey, this is how you're going to treat the man. You're going to let this get away. This or the other. I think they're going to, as a result of that, they're going to let her in the men's rumble because she's the man. I just going to jump our truth at number thirty, or give our truth. Our truth's going to give her a spot. Um. <laughs> and if you think about it, no, it's fair of it. If you think about it, you shouldn't have to touch anyone. They could set up a spot where there's two people trying to take each other out. And she just so happens to be in the right place at the right time. And if you remember correctly, the women's Royal Rumble doesn't offer the main event of WrestleMania. It offers a women's titles match, whereas the men's Royal Rumble offers the main event of WrestleMania, which could be for the women's belt at WrestleMania. Now, there have been people who have been talking about, well, we need a rain event for WrestleMania, so why can't Charlotte win the belt 
before WrestleMania off Asuka and go to WrestleMania. Or Ronda Rousey versus Becky Lynch at the main event of WrestleMania. Well, I know, I know they've been hinting at possibly doing Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch. Exactly. As the the main your main event. Why not do it this year and have it as a way of shoehorning it into the main event, the Royal Rumble? Because that solidifies it. And there's no doubt then of why it's the main event. It's the main event because the Royal Rumble win- winner has chosen the women's belt, and the Royal Rumble winner always gets the main event. It's a way of doing it. Like I say. <laughs> They don't always, do they? Because if you look at Shinsuke AJ last year, they didn't go on last. Yeah, but they call, they call it anything that's got a World Heavyweight Championship is a main event, isn't it? Yeah. In theory. So if they put that on last as well, it would make sense. Um, it could work. I, I like your thinking toward it, but I don't, I don't think they're going to let Becky into the, the men's rumble. Hmm. It all depends on the time of the Women's Rumble. I mean, if the Women's Rumble go up to show, which potentially it could, if they shoehorn the Raw Rumbles at the, at the beginning at the end. Because they did, yeah. it, they did it once. I did it last year. They put the Men's Rumble first, if you remember. And then the Women's Rumble was second. Mm-hmm. Um, then it depends on when they put the Women's Rumble. If the Women's Rumble comes before the Becky and Chaska match, it's happening. Uh. <laughs> it's happening. Mm. Oh, they've, they've announced Borton as well. Oh, he, he can fuck off. He's not win. He's not winning it this year. No. Yeah, I'm. I'm leaning towards Drew because I think if if Lesnar retains, then it's going to be Drew Lesnar at Mania. Mm. And that, uh, that could work. Cause that's a way of getting um Drew the main the, the belt. Yeah. Yeah, that could go. I'll go with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say main. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you on that one. Then actually, I'm gonna have Drew McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble, but if Becky Lynch enters, she's winning it. <laughs> I'm telling you now. One of the main reasons being is the way the WWE have put women against men as well. Yeah. So. Uh... Fuck. <laughs> yeah. There's all sorts, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Bastard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I put, I've, I've chucked a proper spanner in there, haven't I? You have. <laughs> and any other year, you'd think you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> but this year. Mm. Um. <laughs> could, you, could you imagine a reaction as well if Becky Lynch won? Yeah, they'd go, well, they'd go mental if she came out. Yeah, they'd go mental if she won. <laughs> oh, the place would fucking erupt. Mm. So, yeah. I'm still inclined to go with uh, McIntyre. Okay. I've got. I've kind of. I've kind of cheated. Well, I'll tell you something. Who do you think you're going to get any surprises? What debuts or returns or? Either. I think you're going to get a, a couple of NXT guys in there. Uh... I don't think that classes that that would class as a surprise though, because it's almost expected now you're going to get NXT guys in there. Well, the only other thing I like, maybe they, if they, I could see them doing like putting Tyler Bate in it, maybe. I do, yeah. Over I think, next to UK. Yeah, I think you're gonna get three people. Mm. You're gonna get Ty, You're gonna get. I think you're gonna get Pete Dunn. I think you're gonna get Pete Dunn. I think you're gonna get. I think you're gonna get a returning Bray Wyatt. Yeah. And, and here's the big one. Mm-hmm. 
I think we're going to get Kenny Omega. Ooh. I think we're going to get Kenny Omega. You know why I think we're not going to get Kenny Omega? Go on. Because he's still under contract to the 31st of January. But there's no reason why they can't buy out his contract for a few days. They could, but I don't think they would. Mm. Um, You're talking what for now? If he's on, what, how many? It is. I. Because oh. it's that thing of it's. Uh, if it's if they bought out his contract because I've, I've heard stuff he's already turned down a deal, a WWE deal, which yeah, but that, like mega money. Yeah, but that could be um, that could that could be a swerve though. You don't know that. And I think if he did enter the rumble like if the, this whole thing is like if our truth gets taken out and someone he had a mystery attacker then if it was a mega the place to go mental yeah but i can't see it happening unless he was to win there's no reason of someone of his caliber if he did join then yeah he could win but at the same time, AJ Styles joined as well at number three, and he didn't win. So, and he's arguably a bigger star than AJ, AJ Styles when he joined was a bigger star than Kenny Omega was, or is now. So, if AJ Styles didn't win, there's no reason why uh, if if we did get a uh, Kenny Omega, and it's a big if, might I add, and that's assuming that him saying he refused the WWE contract was a swerve, mm. which I'm not 100%, but I'm thinking it could be. Because um, you've not heard any updates about him going to AEW a- 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 since. Well, apparently um, it's like a, a pretty much a done deal that he's going he's gonna to sign with them. Mm. Who said that, though? It's what I've read on the dirt sheets and stuff. I would go. I'd say exactly it's a dirt sheet. If there's nothing confirmed about it, I'd take it with a pinch of salt. But there's no. For me, it would make sense for him to appear at this week's Royal, this year's Royal Rumble. And if they're serious about making him a star, they would buy out the rest of his contract. So it would only be a few thousand pounds that'd be chump change to them. Yeah. See, I still can't see it happening. Mm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being a big like. I'm not got a massive erection over Kenny Omega. I'm not one of these people that absolutely worships what he does. I just think the reaction would be fucking phenomenal if he did did go. And I've gone on record to saying it would make sense for Kenny Omega to come to WWE to solidify a career after his wrestling to make give him a you know a more you know recognized legacy. Mm. as opposed to going right well I've worked for all these obscure indie companies on I a superstar well no because not because the, 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 the you're not going to be remembered who can you think of any indie stars that never made it to the WWE it was it like around in 93 94 <sighs> exactly that's what it's going to be you're, like. You're asking, you're asking me to go back and think to 93, 94, and it's like, right, shit. Yeah, um. yeah, yeah, but you, <laughs> yeah, but you can go and tell me, how can you think of some wrestlers from 93, 94 that was in the WWE? That was. Exactly. Uh, was or, yeah. You know, you had, you know, you had Bret Hart, you had Shawn Michaels, you had, you know, all them lot. Yeah, it was, that was the... Excuse me. The um, sort of the dark era wasn't. It? The other went out of business because he had the whole steroid scandal and stuff. But still, you still know people names of people that was there because they were the ones that were front and center at the time, like they mm-hmm. are now. This is what this is what this is my point. If he wants to make a career for himself after after he's done wrestling, it makes sense even to do a, do a short tenure at WWE because that way the mainstream audience of wrestling will understand and know who he is. Right now, it's people that have got you can only watch wrestling on the fucking internet that know who he is. Unless you're in yeah. Japan, unless you're in Japan. It's I think. 
the only way I can see him appearing at the uh, at the Rumble is if, like you say, they brought his contract, but he'd have, probably have to have one of those um, deals in place that, that they apparently offered to uh, the Young Bucks, where if they weren't happy in six in a six month period or whatever, they were they were free to just walk. Yeah. And that's the only way I could see him doing it, maybe. Like, if they brought him in that way. But it was, from what I read, it was, they'd offered him a three-year deal worth, I think, three and a half million a year. Mm-hmm. Um, a dedicated YouTube show or network show or something like of gaming, this, that, and the other. Pretty much, like, everything he could want. And apparently, he turned it down. Which is why I believe it's a swerve. If he uh, turned up to the table and went, right, this is what I want, and he offered it him, and he turns around and says, no, it's two things. It's either it's a massive swerve, or he's a cunt. Mm. So, I believe, I, for, just for my own, you know, off my own top of my own head, there's no reason, I've not read this anywhere, it's my own opinion. I think it's a swerve, and I think he's going to sign with WWE, and I think he potentially could turn up at the Royal Rumble. That's my opinion. <sighs> what kind of idiot goes up to a negotiation, goes, right, this is what I want, on the, and put it on the table, please, if you want if you want me to sign. And they literally put everything you want on the table. It's like you walking into a, into a job and going, right, I want a million pound per year. And you just go, yep. Yeah. And then you turn them down. Mm. That makes you an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so if they, he's, if he's literally done that, he's gone in and go, I want this, I want that, I want the other, and there you go, right there it is all on the table. All you need to do is sign, and he just goes, no, he's a cock. <laughs> so someone's so either someone's not telling the truth, it's a massive swerve, or he's just genuinely wasting the time to be an absolute wanker. Mm. Oh, sorry. Dude. And I genuinely think it's I think it's more the fact that it's going it's going to it's a massive swerve because people are like what WWE want him to turn up as a surprise. So he's got this like, right you've signed it tell people you haven't. <laughs> uh... It screams of the CM Punk thing again. Where you, you know when he was in air quotations out of contract. Yeah. Walked away at money in the bank and then came back and he was never, never, ever, ever off. Not not on contract. They sent him home mm. to sell the to sell the storyline. I it screams of that to me. Yeah, I'm still not convinced. <laughs> like, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. Like. Like I say, I've not got any, I've not got any sources, or I've not got, I've not read any news sites or anything like that. It's just me, and my own workings in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> so it could be complete shite. So if you're listening to this, don't report it as news and as a source. <laughs> it's just, I just the musings of a crazy man in Blackpool. <laughs> and there's plenty of them to go around. Absolutely. So yeah. Winner of the Raw Rumble. Uh, if Becky Lynch is part of it, she's winning it. If not, then it's, I, I'll go with you, Drew McIntyre. Mm. And that just leaves us to Women's Rumble. Yeah. Um... Not a fucking clue. <laughs> um... well, entrance, we've got Carmella, who enters at number 30. These are confirmed so far, and there's 23. So we've got Carmella, Ember Moon, Natalia, Bailey, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Alicia Fox, Zelina Vega, Naomi, Mickey James, Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Charlotte Flair, Tamina, Dana Brooke, Lana, Nia Jax, Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss, and Lacey Evans. I think it's going to be Nia Jax, actually, now you've said it. I do genuinely um... think that. Why well, you say that she won the Battle Royal, didn't she? Of Evolution. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think now. 
We could use it as a way to uh, catapult Shayna Baszler. Maybe. Um, other than that, I can't see anyone else. It's either going to be... It's got to be her or... If Shayna Baszler's in it, it's a way of like literally fucking firing her into the moon. Unless you want to bring up Ayo I- 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 Shirai or something like that. Um, but Ayo Shirai's only been in NXT for a cup of coffee, so... Mm. Oh, I don't know. But she she might still appear. Yeah, she might still appear. Um, don't forget, there's like there's women who've been in the the May Young Classic tournament who are probably going to appear. Is that? Well, Tony Storm, yeah. Well, I was thinking like Tony, you got Tony Storm, Viper. There's Mia, Mia Yim. Yeah, Viper's not technically signed yet though, is she? But she's going to. From what I've heard, she's going to. Yeah. Um... um... Yeah, it's I've, I've got a sneaky feeling. It's, uh, I've, I've, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think it's going to be um, I think it's going to be Nia Jax, as much as I don't want it to be. Uh. Hmm. I don't think I'm not. I'm going to say confidently. I know it's not going to be Bailey. No. I think she's going to go in the elimination chamber for the belt, the tag belts. Yeah. Mm. I want to lean towards Alexa Bliss because it's like her return. Mm. Uh, oh, I can't see that happening. But uh, mm. Naomi, maybe. Oh, maybe. Outside, but she's, I think she's all like, she's like the fucking um, Kofi Kingston of the women's rumble, isn't she? Yeah, but <laughs> was she not the one who was like really outspoken going, I, I won that battle oil and never got my title match or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Uh... So, again, it's a difficult one because I'm, I know who the players have Charlotte Flair win it. Yeah. And lean towards them doing like a Charlotte Flair, who then whoever like the, the SmackDown belt champion is or whatever, or unless they're setting up for. If they are doing like Lynch Rousey, unless they make it, a, try and make it a triple threat or something. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's no name stand out to me other than Charlotte Flair to win it, but I wanna I wanna say like Yeah, I don't I'm leaning towards Naomi, but I'm gonna say Charlotte Flair's gonna win it. Mm. Yeah, Charlotte Flair's another possibility. I think uh, she's a very high possibility. Yeah. Um I think Nia Jack is going to be the one that she's going to like the big show of the Rumble where everyone's going to team up on her and she's going to like eliminate. Just of course, bang, yeah. bang, 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 bang. Or it's going to take like four of them to get her out or something. Mm. Yeah, good point. So. Oh. Right, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna say Charlotte actually. Now you said that, yeah, Charlotte for me. <laughs> yeah, definitely Charlotte. But then looking at the, uh, my young classic entrance for last year, it's so like you had, you had Yoshirai, you had Isla Dawn, the Ginny. Caitlin, uh, Mako Satamora, Mia Yim, Rhea Ripley, Tegan Knox. Oh, she thinks she's injured. Yeah. Uh, Tony Storm, Zaya Brookside. Uh, all possible entrants. Hmm. I can't see any of them winning it though. I can't see any winning, but I can see them possibly in like guest entrance or surprise yeah, def- entrance or whatever. Def- so. I, I, I reckon Caitlin will be there. Yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. But oh yeah, I'm closing on that. I think it's gonna to have to be Charlotte. Mm. Definitely. I'm going with Charlotte. <laughs> so yeah. 
Right, let's move on to, to the... Uh, We've got a takeover the... review, yeah. <laughs> well, coming up on the two-hour mark. <laughs> I know, but well, we might as well fucking rattle out. But on that note, I need to go take a break because I need to make tinkles. So. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we're on some adverts and we'll be right back. <laughs> right, back in the out. Hey guys, I'm Paul Combs. And I'm Joseph Collins. And we're the host of the CNC Geekcast. The only podcast where two guys with speech impediments talk about movies. We talk about old movies, we talk about new movies, and kind of everything in between. Is there anything we don't cover? Nope. Oh my goodness, this is an incredible show. Where can they find us? cncgeekcast.podbean.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Is there a place we're not located on? No. Okay, what, is there a specific day we come on? Every Tuesday. Oh my goodness, I should have known all this. You should have. So join us on the CNC Geekcast. Hi, I'm Mike from the Genuine Chit Chat Podcast, where we have honest conversations with interesting people. I speak to a wide variety of guests, from travellers to musicians, to those afflicted with mental or physical illnesses. There's really no subject that's off-limits, from movies to politics, and even controversial topics ranging from sex to drug reform and political correctness. So if you still believe in the art of conversation, are intrigued by healthy debates with different ideas and perspectives you may not have thought of, and want a podcast where every episode is about something different with a variety of guests, then this may be the podcast for you. You can hear us on YouTube and all your favourite podcast apps and follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. So if you want to hang out and listen to honest conversations with interesting people, then come to Genuine Chit Chat, where I'm your host, Mike Burton. What is the Pattern Family? This is Gareth from the Open All Powers Podcast. This is Adam from Everyone Has a Podcast. This is Matthew McDonough from the Passersby Podcast. This is Nick from the Epic Film Guys Podcast. This is Eric Mocker from the Mockers Podcast. Hey, this is Rick from Ice and the Face. Hey guys, it's Rad Dad Chad. J Mills. And Lil Man. From the Full of Fiber Podcast. Hey, we're Josh and David from the Scotch and Flicks Podcast. Hey y'all, it's Juliette Miranda from the Unwritable Rant Podcast. Hey, this is Bro from the World of Row Podcast. This is Cyanide from the Little Geek Lost Podcast. This is Paul from the Countdown Movie and TV Reviews Podcast. This is Greg from the Sports Dance Podcast. This is Nock from the Geek Yogurt Podcast. We are you. Podcasters coming together in a community to help one another grow. So follow us on Twitter at Potter and Family and use the hashtag Potter and Family in your tweets and retweet other people who do the same. Potter and Family, where great podcasts come home. And we're back. That we are. <laughs> after, after, after Tinkles. <laughs> that was a long one. It was two hours of non tinklage. <laughs> I'd like to say I was crossing my legs for the last half, like hour, but I'm sat I'm, on my current setup. I'm sat on the floor, so legs were crossed. So <laughs> I didn't fancy sitting in a puddle of my own piss. So it had to, we had to go to break. <laughs> Dedication to the game. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let me just reload these. Uh, yeah, so now we're on to the NXC Takeover Blackpool results. Yeah, which has been a long time coming. <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks, yes. <laughs> Jesus. Well, what's I say... old, uh, like I said, what's the whole thing of two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> Need to put a soundbite in of um, that woman from Total Recall. Two weeks. <laughs> God. But I have orange, so I'm happy. Wow. But yeah, we uh, we actually attended the show. We did, and we got progressively hammered beforehand. Yes, we did. At 1887 The Brew Room. Yeah, where we had our meet-up. <laughs> it, which went very well. It did. It was, um, it was packed when we left, and it was packed when we got back in. Even more so. Yeah. But, uh... Batman defeated Penguin. Yes, we, we did. Batman did defeat Penguin. <laughs> so, and yeah, he's uh, welcome to the Van Hammer, as they say. Exactly. So. Repeatedly hit with it. If only. Yeah, if only. But fuck him. He did spoil uh, our fun. Mm. But why try and shit on someone else's good sign? Well, I don't this is know. it. He was fucking. 
And it ended up, ended up being, he showed up to be, showed himself to be the complete dick that he was anyway. So, mm. a cock. <laughs> End of the day, if you're a killjoy, you see some. Even if you know what, if you got like, you know, you, you get the idea, because it seemed like last minute idea, might I add, shock horror. Um, yeah, don't don't piss on somebody else's parade because you haven't thought of it first. Mm. Off you fuck and just do your own thing. <laughs> don't, be, word... don't be fucking pedantic about shit either. I was gonna say the word is I use was kinda go fuck yourself, but <laughs> Yeah, that works either way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go down with your sinking ship. Prick. I mean, anywho, um yeah, he did Yeah, moving swiftly on. Yeah. So yeah, we had our meet up uh, at eighteen eighty seven the brew room. Yeah. Um it did clash with other events, but we still had a, a decent turnout. Yeah, we did well considering it was up against the big boys. And uh we we showed some takeover not some takeover, we showed some NXT UK, which people told me this week they were happy to see because when they got there the, the go home show was on. Yeah. And they said they said to me, "Oh, I've not seen this one yet." So I was ha- happy to be catching up on it because like, I, I wanted you to know what was going in, what was happening going into takeover. So I was yep. like, I'm glad you did that. I was yep. like, "Oh yeah." Providing so, a service. Yeah. There you go. There was plenty of people crowding around the TV. I do remember that. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was um, that went well. Um, so yeah, we we we, we steadily got um, drunker. Buncle got steadily more ill. Um, <laughs> Bless him. I was I was drinking copious amounts of uh, William Regal. Yes, he was. And uh, Blond- the blonde ale. The Blackpool. I was on the Blackpool blonde, yeah. Yeah. And I was on the the golden belt. Yeah, not a pint of James Drake, but we had. No, it's a pint of William Regal. Had to be. It had to be. <laughs> Well, I'll just get my really tight bullet club T-shirt on and tell you you're wrong, because I'm a smart. So take, your high, take your high IQ, fuck off, and can they go fuck yourself? Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Go on, mate. I was going to say, well, what we're... We are, let's, lead... let's not dwell. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, let's lead into the event, so... Absolutely. So we walked in, we had... You were the only one that got frisked. Yeah, because I had them, uh, pocket of cards on me. Of course, yes. So, what's that in your pocket? Business cards. All right, okay, you can go through. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you tried to give them away. Um, but yeah, we got decent, we got fairly decent seats, didn't we, really? Yeah, second row. Yeah, second row on the balcony. Um, cracking view over everyone's head, so we didn't get an obstructed view apart from two big lads sat in front of me. But at the end of the day, we didn't stand up for the show anyway, so it didn't really matter. Well, the other, the other obstruction we had was the they had the uh, they had the 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 little Tron doing the the videos to hype up each match upcoming or whatever. But yes. then had two like uh, banners in front of that. So you, if you weren't sat directly facing on, you couldn't see anything. This is it. We could, we could only literally see a fraction of the um, a fraction of the screen. Yeah. So luckily, because we'd already seen parts of it, it didn't really matter. But uh, the bit that we didn't see was um, Travis Spanks getting his shit kicked in. And they look yeah. like the main, the main entrance of the place. Mm. But other than that, no complaints really about the view, was there? No, it was a decent view. Mm, it was it was good. Um, then we saw three matches that were going to be on the next week's um, NXT UK. Yeah. We had um, was it Isla Dawn versus Ginny. We had um, Fabian Aitner and um, I can't what they've given him the, the Axel Dieter Jr. is his indie name, but I can't remember what they've given him on the show. Mar- Marcel Barfell. 
There you go. Marcel Barfell versus um, Mark Andrews and um, Flash Morgan Webster. Mm-hmm. And then we had um first match we had was um El Liguero versus um Saxon Saxon Huxley. Saxon Huxley, yeah, there you go. And yeah, it was they were they weren't bad either of them. Any of them they were all right. I mean Isla Dawn Ginny was a bit of a sleeper, but other than that, the two the tag match was decent and El Liguero always puts on a half decent match, at least so yeah. So, yeah, can't complain about the dark matches. They were all right. Um, and then it went on to the first match of the match of the main card, wasn't it? Yeah, well, should, should we cover the, the pre-show matches first, or should we just jump into the main card? Um, I'm trying to think if I remember much of the pre-show cards, to be brutally honest. Um, I just know that, you know, Leguero won. Um... Ginny won, and Fabian Aitner and uh, Marcel Bar- Barfell. Yeah. They won much. their match. <laughs> Matches are on the network, so. But yeah, they were decent. They're nothing to complain about. Yeah. So then we had the main card. Yeah, it was. Opening for the card, it was. I can find it. It disappeared. Bastard. Well, it was. Um, it was Mustache Mountain versus Grizzled Young Vets. Oh yes, for the belts. Yeah, for the tag belts. Um, Zach Gibson and James Drake, local boy. Yep. Um, our and, boy. Yeah, our boy. <laughs> your boy. And it was a good fucking match. It was probably match of the night. Yeah, they they gave it quite a lot of time. I noticed. About thirty five minutes it was. Um, close twenty three. Oh, oh, nowhere near then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. It was good to see uh, James Drake back on his home soil. Oh yeah. Uh, growing up down the road from. From the the venue itself. This is it. Um, I know he he's wrestled in. I think he's wrestled at. I think he'd wrestled at the Winter Guard before, but he's also wrestled at the Tower before as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, with different companies. So, but of course, as people do and don't know, I used to, I did used to train with him like ten years ago, but I'm not gonna throw it out there because then apparently uh, Trent Seven doesn't like podcasts. Who knew? Oh, who knew? And who really cares? <laughs> no, don't give a flying fuck. If you don't listen, that's one person. Well, there's that and the fact that the people who tell me this have to remember, I don't cater, my audience in this pod isn't catered to the likes of Trent Seven. No. It's catered to the fans. This is it. We don't so, bother, we're not bothered about talent listening because it's, it's not aimed at them. No. So, we're entitled to our voice anyway, so, in our opinion whether people like it or not, so... Yeah. So, uh, the one thing I do remember standing out was Mustache Mountain wearing the... like a red and black tights. Yep. It was like a, a tribute almost to the British Bulldogs. Yeah, the way, the way they... they are, yeah, the, um, the gear was with the... Um, like the tights, but it looked like they had like trunks at the top. Sort of like shape, colour, sort of thing. Yeah. It was sort of, yeah, it was like a tribute to the Bulldogs. So, yeah. It was a good match, a really good match. I mean, they had a really, really, a few few really sick sort of fucking spots, like the um, suicide dive doomsday device that they had near the end, Mm. which killed killed Tyler Bate off in the match. Which is all like it's, it's little details as well. Things like if you watch them at that spot, you'll notice that Tyler Bate was still trying to fight out of the um, electric chair. Ah. He was still like trying is to it, punch. Is this something you notice on like a second viewing or something? Or um, well, we probably wouldn't have seen it from where we were. Yeah. But um, on a second viewing, you'd notice it. Yeah. Ah. 
It's like little things like he's stag- he's still tr- he's trying to get out of the electric chair before James Strait funds flying out. <laughs> Followed up by the drop kick from James Drake when um, Trent Seven came flying out the ring to try and get uh, Zach Gibson, you know, like another suicide dive. Yeah, but it was like intercepted by James Drake with a uh, with a uh, flying drop kick. Mm. That was quite nice. I'm glad you, you remember all this because I was pretty hammered at this point. So. Oh, and then you had um, <laughs> you had the double aeroplane aer- spin as well, where um, I remember that, but yeah, Tyler Bate had them both up on his shoulders, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So that was fun. Um, but yeah, it was a good match. I, I really enjoyed it, and uh, Grizzled Young Vets get the win. Well, hey. Hey. So and they the are, belts. And the belts as well. Yeah, they're the UK Tag Team Champions. So, yeah, it was a good match. In 23 minutes, 45 seconds. And it was a fucking fantastic match. It was. Uh, Next up, we had... uh, Well, Jordan Jordan Devlin against uh, Travis Banks. Yep. Though, as we saw earlier on, Travis Banks got taken out and injured. When he came out for the match anyhow. Came out for the match anyhow. And... Uh, got murdered. Yeah. Got murdered. Yeah. yeah, he got got murdered. And then uh, Sid Scala, the assistant general manager, announced Devlin will still be competing and against his opponent. Yeah. Which, when you listen the... to the promo, there was a bit of a spoiler when he said he was the best Irish wrestler of all time. Uh... Um, and then next out, Seamus. Yeah, lobster <laughs> so, head came out. <laughs> so yeah, uh, place goes pitch black. Everyone goes mental, and of course Finn Balor appears. Yeah. By the way, that reaction that we was at when we was there, we obviously witnessed it firsthand and was part of it. Fucking goosebumps. By the way. Yeah. And they turned the volume down on the network. Bastards. It was not as loud as you think it is. If you are if you watch it on the network, yes, there's a pop. Yes, it's loud. It's nothing compared to being there. Nothing. I think people's ears were ringing. It was that loud. Everyone. Is this because he wanted a louder pop later on for something else? or Possibly. I don't know. I've not watched the rest of it. I've watched the first two matches on the network. Um, but it was fucking phenomenal, the reaction. I've never known out like it. Yeah. I mean, I was in the reaction at PCW when Austin Aries came out, and that was loud. <laughs> was you? I think you were there for that one, wasn't you? I wasn't, unfortunately. I just oh. remember hearing about it. Well, we was there. It was like, oh, my fucking God. The place <laughs> went mental. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's this was insane. I was surprised I didn't have to have something to stop the show to check the fucking roof was still attached. <laughs> it was insane. But it's, yeah, it's like we were saying beforehand, though. They're like, they he wouldn't just be in the UK to say two sentences about them opening the. The performance uh, center. Open the performance center and then just sort of disappear or go back to America, or whatever. Like, he's, he's here not. for something. Like, yeah, absolutely not. I mean, he was here to actually do something. Yeah. Um, the match that he did though wasn't exactly amazing. It was just, it wasn't exactly a phone in. He did do, he did, he did wrestle good. Um, it was a good match. It was a good match. Well, it, 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 not phoning in, but it was. A bit of going through the motions. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he did. He actually did pull off a bloody Sunday. Yeah, and um, the coup de gras. And the coup de gras. Um, and obviously, you know, he, he got the win. He was okay. The crowd were happy. Mm. I don't think anyone was upset with any of the results tonight. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um. It was a surprise because it was the first takeover as well. 
Um, this is it. And we were expecting a surprise. Yeah. We weren't expecting it to be Finn. Mm. We were expecting Finn to maybe be in the crowd. Yeah, I was partially expecting just uh, an appearance on camera of 30 seconds or something. But Yeah. We got more than that. And then we got into the next match. Oh, yeah. Uh, Finn Balor got the win in 11.45. Yeah, so it wasn't a long match, but it was good. Mm. Um, it seemed longer than that, though. A lot of these matches seemed longer, especially the tag match. Yeah. So, you know, there was only 23 minutes. Well, this is it. Um, I say only, but... It's like I'm comparing that to the likes of bloody RVD Sabu against Hayabusa Jinsei Shizaki at Heatwave 98. I went on forever and did fuck all. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, next up, we've got Dave Mastiff against Eddie Dennis in a no DQ match. How you make a no DQ match be the worst match of the night, I don't know. <laughs> now, I'm not saying this match was awful, it wasn't. Uh, it just wasn't the best match of the It was the worst match of the night. Not including the pre-show matches. Uh, there was a few nice spots in it, but nothing to write home about. I mean, you had um, Eddie Dennis rip up the mats, wasn't it? And yeah. exposed the concrete. Which inevitably he went into. Mm. Um, if you notice, Eddie Dennis took all the bumps. Mm-hmm. Um... Still don't rate him as a wrestler. He looks fucking awkward in the ring, even more so in person. <laughs> um, what he did have, though, was on his ring gear, a gold Blackpool Tower. Oh. So I did enjoy that. Um, but Mastiff was a fucking machine in this match. I think Mastiff's going to be one of the ones to watch in NXT through the year. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I finally saw his springboard moonsault. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, he springed off the middle rope onto the top rope. He sat and then did like a sit down springboard moonsault off the top rope, ah. which was fucking amazing. <laughs> Missed it, but it looked amazing. <laughs> and yeah, massive tick picks up the win after general after putting. Um, he hits what he is now calling into the void for a table. But that doesn't fit his character. Let's call it the cannonball. He's a bomber. Or call, or call it the air raid or something like that. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah he, I don't he, know. he wins and it was it was okay. Not special. Not special, no. It was it was just there, wasn't it? It was just filler really, wasn't it, between Yeah, the, it was the, like uh, so yeah, Dave Master gets to win it in 10 minutes 50. Yeah, it just solidifies the fact that Denny Dennis is just meh. Yeah, he much. really is just meh. <laughs> and up next, oh, I've got a delivery. Hold on, your front door. Yeah, my front door again. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm back. Why? Hey, it was actually for me this time. Ah. <laughs> open it, recording open it, open it. Oh, I'll open it now. It's got one Blackpool Council on it, so. <laughs> um, so yeah, up next, we had Tony, Tony Storm against Rhea Ripley for the NXT UK Women's Championship. A uh, half-decent match. It wasn't amazing. Um, it, it was decent. The problem with it is the every time I hear Tony Storm's theme, it just makes me think of Go Go Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> it does as well. <laughs> it doesn't fit as good as the old one. So well, it's like when when we did our event at the brew room and someone was asking me like I put out a thing like oh uh, any requests for themes to play, and one guy was like I want um what's the name Ray Ripley's theme. I was like, well, I can't find a current one. He's like, no, no, I want the May Young Classic one. I was like, good, because that's one I found. He's like, yeah, a new one's shit. 
Yeah, it is a bit crap. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is a bit. It, Ray Ripley's, it's not great. It's just a woman screaming into the microphone. Um, but yeah, the match was all right. It wasn't anything special. It was Rhea Ripley looked like a little bitch in this match. Um, because I don't remember her getting loads of offence in like she normally does. You know, like she was normally she's one of these because she's a bigger wrestler mm. compared to the rest of the division. She's booked really dominant, and she wasn't in this match. <sighs> It's a thingy one, isn't it? Like she did a, she went for a lot of cheap heat. I think if anything with this one, yeah. Like because the whole thing with Tony Storm's uh, nudes leaking, and um, she she brought that up in a uh, like a press conference at one point. Oh, yeah, it's probably a no go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. Uh, tasteful in a sense like it wasn't for, for like you posted nudes or your nudes got leaked to her it was like the way the way she worded it it was like, a, it was like i can't remember how she worded it but it was um almost if she's coming across like, like a um petty like a petty bully almost oh yeah so ah fair enough then but yeah i'm I thought it, and I had a feeling it was going to go Tony's way. Yeah, uh, I mean, Stevie Wonder could see that. <laughs> but I, I did, I did think she, that Ray Ripley was going to get a bit more offense in. Yeah, it was a bit strange. Like I say, you know, the way she's been booked in NXT UK, because she's one of the bigger lasses on the on the show. She's been dominating, like she's like you know, like a big re- male wrestler would. You know, someone like a Drew McIntyre or something like that, where they dominate the majority of the match and the face gets, you know, the comeuppance at the end. Yeah. I was expecting that kind of drag-out match, but it wasn't. It was very, very, like, Tony Storm did get a hell of a lot of offence in, mm. which didn't really fit, but it wasn't bad either. It. I don't know if it's the fact that because we were there and it made it seem better, but... It was all right. I mean, I can't really complain too much about it. Both well, I think, women looked all right. I think the partial problem was as well, people were still possibly burnt out from the, the uh, Devitt appearance. Sorry, Finn Balor. Well, yeah, because it weren't that long before, was it? You think about because the hardcore match wasn't that long. <laughs> well, before that, though, I mean, we all... Sorry, go on. I meant to mute that then. <laughs> hey. um, yeah, it's well, you had like you had the tag title match, then you had Finn Balor, then you had Mastiff A. Dennis is sort of like the, the cool down, but it wasn't so much as a cool down as it was straight into it was only ten minutes. Oh, yeah. And then you had you had Tony Storm Ray Ripley, which going goes on with just, just under fifteen. And even then people were ready for I think just for the main event. This is it. Um, but yeah, you're saying between that as well, you had the uh, you had Alpha Female, and you had um, what's her name, uh, Kaylee Ray. Yeah, apparently was she was she sat with the belt or something as well. I don't know which belt it was. If I'm honest, I, don't I know think it, I think it was the World of Sport. I've not seen it. Uh, I'm going to quickly look it up now. Um, Kaylee, I'm going to look it up. Google it, Kaylee Ray. NXT takeover. Okay, Lee Ray NXT. That's no, not right. No, no NXT <laughs> takeover. I've just found it now. Let's have a look. Images. Oh, she's not got the belt on the on the shot. No, a few people were sat around us for saying she did. Oh, there it is. There's one that right behind her. I'm trying to zoom in on the picture for all that. Someone's holding it up. Unless it's a fan one. Because there is someone. 
I must have a different frame because I've got the picture. The picture I've got is where they've actually announced they've announced them as Kaylee Ray and Jazzy Gabert. Yeah, I've got that one. Uh, I shall send it to you my, via message. My Maybe eyesight, I'll... my eyesight's really shit then. Right, I've sent it. Let's have a look. But she went away with the belt, didn't she? Yeah, I was looking at a different frame. <laughs> so hang on, let me just have a look at World of Sport Women's. I think that is the one because I remember their belt is white. So. <laughs> ah. Why is it called World of Sport? I've put WOS on, aren't I? Yeah. Helps if I spell W-O-S right, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, it could be. It could be. Let me just check. Sorry about this, folks. I think it is. I think it is. Oh, no, it's not. No. No, because the side panel, the plate's a different shape. So I don't know what belt that was. But I don't know if it was hers, to be honest with you, because there's someone behind her holding it up. So but she did, take, she did take the belt away with her, though, didn't she? I know what belt that is. What's that? It's it's the old Eagle belt. Oh, okay. Looking at it, it's the... You can t- they've got the lines on the side, the, right next to the, the middle plate. And when the, when that uh, when that the warrior had it in that he, he had it in different uh, different colours different colours yes so was that there was a white one a purple one and the yellow ah, one ah right and it looks like that's the the white belt right because we were strap so because we was wondering we were sat behind wasn't we but up yeah and it looked like obviously we obviously we've no world of sport shudder. Um, <laughs> We thought it was the World of Sport belt. We're that far away, we couldn't ascertain what it was, but she definitely took it with her, didn't she? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so we were thinking that's got to be the World of Sport belt. But they are they are here tomorrow for uh, for the World of Sport tour. Oh, in Blackpool, in the, in the ballroom? Yeah. Because that's an amazing fucking venue for wrestling. Oh, yeah, I had a, a certain... Uh... Dedicated wrestling fan. Um, his favourite wrestler is The Croc. <laughs> he he does say more. And um, he uh, he was asking me like if I'm going and stuff. I was like, no, I have no plans to go. Um, he's like, oh, do you, who do you think is going to be there? And uh, do you think there's only VIP and stuff? I was like, I don't really care because I'm not going. <laughs> like... <laughs> So, yeah, fuck that noise. I mean, we say we saw it on TV and it was fucking garbage. So, yeah, it it went down a slippery, slippery slope, didn't it? So, Mm -hmm. fucking awful. And that's not to not anything against some of the talent there, apart from fucking um, what's his name, the one that's begging for a WWE contract, essentially. Um, he's the champ. Oh, uh, Max dead is it? No, Adam Max dead. Oh no, no. J- Justin Justin Sysom. Sysom, yeah. So. He's got the most impressive thing he can do is a st- is a spear from the outside into the ring. That's about it. Mm. He's shite, in other words. <laughs> so hey ho, but yeah, we've got this main event to look at. Oh yeah, Charlotte was there before the main event as well. Uh, Charlotte briefly appeared and just quickly disappeared. Yeah. Before the fans could mob her, it's Blackpool after all. <laughs> We're sat in there. It's like, yeah, just walk, walk, walk to the front row. Like you've been standing there for like just watching the show, and it's like a bit of a wave and buggers off. Yeah, it's amazing though. Some of uh, the um, when you go to a show, some of the background things that you don't see or are aware of um, when you watch it on TV. For example, when. Um, when Tony Storm won the belt, you had the referee. He was is it, it was it was a guy that used to be a wrestler, wasn't it? I can't remember his name. 
he was he was Drake younger. There you go, Drake younger. Movie. Yeah. And he's giving them bits of direction and stuff. Yeah, he was like telling uh, Tony Storm to like lift the belt up and start like going yeah, like you know, as he would. Mm. And she was like, doing exactly that, and she was he was telling her to like lead against the barricade. Yeah. And do that shot where she's got she's with the fans and things like that. So it, it's amazing how <laughs> choreographed that all that is. Well, that that'll have been uh, trips in his in his earpiece, like tell her to stand this, tell her to stand over here, tell her to pose, and all that yeah. sort of thing. So this is it's, it's amazing what you <laughs> it's amazing because you don't think that you don't think of that, do you, when you're watching it on TV? But when you're there, you're like holy shit! <laughs> well, you realize you realize the curtain. Yeah, exactly. And then you realize how quick and like how slick the machine is. I mean, after that hardcore championship match, hardcore match, sorry, um, how quick they cleared the ring up. Yeah. It was insane. I remember going to some, a certain indie promotion. It took a good five minutes sometimes to clear the ring. But they do it before interval, so they had a chance to clear the ring. Mm. You know, so it's it's insane. <laughs> But um, yeah, then we had our main event. Yeah, which was J- uh, Joe Coffey against Pete Dunne for the WWE UK Championship. Yeah, you say um, Glad um, not Glad. That's that's a fucking portal. Um, I forgot their fucking name. Uh, Gallus. Gallus, there you go. They ca- they came out looking like they were about to go to the driving range. <laughs> um, yeah, and it came out, and it was yeah typical heel shit, as you do. You've got Pete Dunn coming out with was it new gear? I think he came out with different coloured gear, didn't he? Than he normally does. His uh, he had like a gold thing on the back of his jacket, like a wolf. Yeah, and it was in gold, so it's like, well, that doesn't tell you he's winning. Well, this is it. <laughs> but yeah, it was a long ass match. Yeah, uh did uh, 30, 34 minutes fifteen seconds. Yeah, it was fucking long and it felt long and it was exhausting. I think everyone was knackered at this point. We were knackered, but it didn't help the Empress Ballroom was red hot as well. Yeah, it was white it was it was so fairly warm. warm. In there. Yeah, it was fucking roasting. Um, to the point where you don't put your jacket on because when you went outside, you didn't feel the benefit. Um, <laughs> but it was fucking roasted in there. And it was fucking exhausted, but it was a fucking good match as well. Really good match. It it was good. I wouldn't say it was match of the night because that, no, it goes, wasn't that the goes to the tag match. Uh, it what's, was decent, though, for what it was. What spoiled the match was the finish. Yeah. Um, what happened was he went to the top rope to do what I, from what I understand, it was supposed to be like an arm bar, and he oh, was supposed right. to tap out from there because he'd already done the bitter end, if you think about it, in the ring. Because yeah. we thought we thought it was going to be the bitter end that we were going for a top rope bitter end. Well, the the story of the match was uh, that he couldn't put him down with the bitter end, wasn't it? Yes. Um, so then, I, my logic to it was, is like, well, he, he, can't, he hasn't put him, can't put him down to the better end, so it's he's going for a top rope better end. Mm. Well, what from my understanding is he was going to go for like an armbar with the joint manipulation as well, off the top rope. Right. And obviously they went to do that, and it, it fucked up first time because then. Joe Joe Coffey fell off the top rope. Mm. Then he went for the same spot again. And they both fell off the top rope this time. Yeah, it looked a bit... didn't look pleasant. It didn't look pleasant. You could tell it weren't planned because the whole place went quiet. Mm. And then next thing, you know, they roll in the ring, they hit a move, and then they just go, fuck it. And then uh, go, fuck it, go home. And so he just went for the joint manipulation and he tapped out to bend his fingers back. Yeah, he uh, he kept he tried the bit end like three or four times, couldn't get it. He was going for whatever they're gonna do on the top rope. Didn't get cut they both fell off and it's like, all right, fuck it, get in the ring. Um 
it's like triangle choke and then the bending the fingers and he tapped out. Yep, that was it. No, it wasn't though. Mm-hmm. Because what happened after the match? The place went fucking mental. Is what happened. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously we say um, Pete Dunne won by a submission, retains the belt. Uh, while he's in the middle of the ring. Next thing you know, Walter. Walter's he's, music He's hits. a big man. He's a big boy. He's a big scary man. He is a big scary man. And by records, he apparently had a couple of matches the day after. I believe, yeah, he makes his debut this this week, I think, on TakeOver. Yes. It's already on the network. Ah. Um... Yeah, he appeared in his uh, ring camp coat. Yep. Uh, booted bloody Joe Coffey in the face and then literally just stood and stared down Pete Dunn. Yeah. Hand, hands behind his back. So. That theme uh, tune, I hope it stays. Mm. Was that his indie theme tune? Yes. But it was, it was the one Jack Gallagher used it when he was. Uh, when he was on the Indies, and then right. uh, Walter was using it uh, as part of Ring Camp along with uh, Axel. Uh, what's he called? Axel Ax- Dieter. Yeah. Um. So if I, I'm guessing if he's used it, if he used it at Takeover, and I'm gonna, I'm guessing he's gonna come in with that, and he'll, that'll probably become his theme unless they give them something else to Hope, hopefully but Tommy End came in didn't he with a different theme and changed Alice to Black and had a completely different theme altogether so yeah because there's, there's a chance they might not so well they seem to be keeping him as Walter so yeah well they've stopped to all the name changes haven't they they seem to which I don't understand because as you know there's a bigger because if you're making a name on the indie scene you're going to make a bigger name for themselves on the um on the big on the big screen on the big scene, so a small following's better than no following. Which is it, yeah. So probably best keeping the name. So yeah, that was takeover. <laughs> it was. O- overall I'd give it four out of five. Maybe three and a half. <laughs> I want to. I want to go full dick fate, but I'm just like, I give. I give this pet this event three and a half out of five. <laughs> if you smell <laughs> what Dick the Doc is cooking, <laughs> fucking hell, man. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It was decent. Get it watched on the network. Um, I'd safely say it's the best WWE pay-per-view I've ever attended. Um, it's, the, it's the only pay-per-view I've attended. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons we had to go, because you can count how many pay-per-views you've had in the in, in the UK in, on two hands. Mm. You know, so we could say we was there. Yeah. In fact, they were, t- they were selling T-shirts that said on the back, I was there. <laughs> so... You know, it's one of them. So yeah, it was a good show. Get it watched. Yeah, I'll agree. Get it watched. Um, but when do you think the next one, next one's going to be? Um, I want to say the week before Mania. Hmm. I don't know. Well, because the week before Mania, they had to announce it like. Surely at the Bournemouth shows, which I think are taping next month, aren't they? Yeah, if they're going to do it, they'll do it then. If not, I, think, I can imagine it being the twice yearly thing. Maybe once before SummerSlam and once before Royal Rumble, maybe. Uh, maybe. But I don't think we're going to get one in Blackpool for a while. We might get some TV tapings, but I don't think we're going to get a pay-per-view. Yeah, I think the... I think if anything, like... I can see them doing takeover every year in Blackpool now. Like yeah. in Jan- January, like January, t- January takeover will be Blackpool because obviously we're not as big as America, so there's not as many places for them to go. Um, but I can see them 
if they do like four a year, they could at least do one in each part of the UK. So if they do one in like Scotland, one in Wales, one in England, and one in Ireland or something like that. Um, because like if they do it in Dublin, the flight in Dublin's only thirty quid from Manchester. Oh yeah. Uh, or forty quid or whatever return, uh, depending on when you go and stuff like that. Uh, if you're not fussy with accommodation, you can stay in a hostel for like ten euros a night. You know, so, um, but I think if anything like next, I reckon they're gonna go to like Liverpool or. I think they'll go to a different part of the country. I think they're gonna. Be, I think they'll probably go do someone in the, somewhere like York Hall. Wouldn't surprise me. I think that'll uh, be the next place, York Hall or um, or Wembley Stadium or something. Not the like the football Wembley Stadium, but the. Um, I was gonna say London, but I, I think it'd be like the. Oh, what's it? They could do a smaller football ground as well, you, you know, thinking about it. Well, there's, there's the one there, uh, what's it runs in? Um, progress and that, they do, Alexander Palace. Oh, yeah. The Ali um, Pali. Yeah. Like, the Manchester, you got the Victoria Warehouse. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's, there's, possib- there's possibilities are endless. It's a case mm-hmm. of just where, where they'd want to go and where they'd sell tickets and things like that. Um, obviously, Blackpool's a moneymaker for them, so it's going to be a repeat in this case of when, considering the UK tournament was two years ago. Which is it, they're still coming back. Yeah. So. Well, Blackpool's got a special place now, hasn't it? Because it's the first place and it's the, what, the birth of the NXT UK division. Mm. So. So, yeah. I think we've got everything covered <laughs> somehow. Yeah. It was what was it? What was what I listened to last. I had a, an Austin podcast on last night, and it was it was talk. Oh, it was uh, Joe Janella. Oh right. And it, he's talking about. He's like, I went, I went and wrestled at. He's like, tell me about the Invisible Man. And he's like, I wrestled him at the the. I wrestled him here and here, and then I went to I went to work for this uh, company called PCW, and I wrestled I wrestled him at the Blackpool Tower in Blackpool. Oh yeah. It's like a mini mark out moment for Blackpool there. It's like, yes, we got yeah. a mention on Steve Austin's party. Nice. <laughs> I might have a listen to it then. Um, oh, I said it, he's putting on a load of all, the old classic episodes at the moment, and one of the ones that went on this past week was like Paul Heyman or something. Oh, it's yeah. Like, yes, must get. Because <laughs> uh, the Paul Heyman episode is so good. I'll have a look, see, see if I can yeah. give it a listen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. I think I have nothing else to add. With uh, no, I think I think we're good. Take over or anything else? No, I think we're good there. Get it watched. So, that's all I need to say. Yeah, uh, let us know your thoughts on what you think is going to happen at Takeover on the Rumble. Uh, what you think is going to happen with the Hall of Fame? What you think is going to happen with? With takeover going, takeover UK going forward. Uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah, it's been a, there's been a lot to talk about, so <laughs> we've managed to get through it together. Mm. And I've got to edit it before I get picked up to go to this gig. Absolutely. <laughs> Have fun with that. I'm just sure throw, I will. I just throw it on raw and dirty. That's what I would do. Fuck it. Delivery, and de- delivery, and all. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah. All right. Uh, you best give yourself some plugs. Yep. You can find me as the host of the RAD Live podcast. Uh, we are on Twitter at UK RAD podcast. We're on Facebook at UK, uh, on, on www.facebook.com forward slash UK RAD podcast. And you can find us in the same place you find this podcast because we are now on the same feed, I believe. Same. Uh, same. Thing on Spreaker, but we're different feeds. Absolutely. And you can also oh, fo- yeah. yeah, absolutely. I can also follow me as a complete bastard as Steve the Betrayer GTMP. Or <laughs> Steve GTM at Steve GTMP, where I have a distinct hatred for Tommy the Gunslinger. 
But everyone else seems to be pissing me off on there as well. So, Rogar, be warned. <laughs> Blaze of glory. Absolutely. <laughs> but funnily enough, though, it's Steve's... Steve's had been having a few funny dreams recently, so... I don't know what that means. It can't be good. If he's on GTMP and he's having funny dreams, that can't be a good a good thing. Indeed. Hmm. Eat less cheese. Drink less mead. Yeah. Yeah, that might be a good idea. <laughs> be less of a cunt. No, it's not possible. <laughs> put put down the stein of mead. Put down the cheese board and get the fuck out. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So, hmm. yeah, that's me. Beautiful. Well, you can uh, find our main pod, Lost Out of Podcasting, on all good podcast places uh, iTunes, Spotify, Stitch, uh, the usual places. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Lost Out of Podcasting, Twitter, at Lost Out of Podcast, on Instagram as well. And of course, uh, this pod, Lost Out of Wrestling, you find us on Facebook, all the usual podcast places. Uh, Twitter, we're at LAOW Podcast. That's L A O W Podcast. Uh, give us a follow. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. And while you're at it, following people on Twitter, don't forget you can also follow the actual Gunpowder Trees and No Pot podcast at, at Trees and No. And obviously, our good friend, our colleague, the brother that's not here at this minute, the delivery man, the man of a thousand gimmicks, James Billy the Boy Bunkle. You can find him at Rogar GTMP. So, yeah, I think that's all we need to cover, really, plug-wise. Yep, well, that's going to wrap it up. So, uh, for the last start of wrestling, I've been Coxie. I've been the fucking fat guy. I told you, the flaming grill. Oh, yes, the flaming grill. I am the flaming grill. I need to get sponsorship. <laughs> there you go. I say, pay me and I'll rename myself to the flaming grill. There you go, TFG. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been listening thank you very much bye